a long time ago in another galaxy <laughs> far, far away. <laughs> <laughs> what, you didn't like that one? That was good. That was good. Thanks, Dad. I got one for you. You'll never see it coming. <laughs> well, heck no. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it is. It's still across the country. I have to leave just... my apartment for this. I should have just FaceTimed you for everything. <laughs> and you like my new helmet? Oh, yeah. Thank you. Hey everyone, welcome back to another Ahsoka Tastic episode of Empire Radio. I'm Jeremiah. I'm No Jedi. I'm Drew. Okay. And we are back with Ahsoka Season 1, Episode 2, Toil and Trump tr- Trouble. <laughs> did, you, did, you like, did you like my introduction? That was so loud. Wow. You are no Jedi, that's for sure. Yeah, I, I am. I've been saving that one all day just for you, Jeremiah. But it's Andrew. Well, for those of you who don't recognize my voice, it's Andrew. I'm here. And if you're this is your first time hearing Angie's voice because you just discovered what a us, time to be alive. You he's, Hola, como was estás? A, was an OG host and now he's a guest host between one and three times a month, depending on <laughs> depending on what's going on. <laughs> on what's going how many on. how many episodes did I get through before I took my leave? Do you know? It was a little over a hundred. Yeah, it was a it was a good long while. So. But now we're, this is episode 220. Whoa. So. It's more than 219. Welcome. Well, yep. Hey. Welcome. Welcome. What, this uh, math today, what are we doing? <laughs> but yes. So this morning, Drew and I recorded our breakdown for episode one, but now we're here with episode two. I was going to try to make that. And then they were like, yeah, we're going to do it at 8, 8 a.m. And I was like, that's 6 a.m. my time. Not that happening. That was Drew's decision. Yeah, not, not happening. Mine. And I did not regret that decision. But we could have done it last night, but someone's apartment was dirty. Yep. What? I said Dude, we could have done it last after, night. After Empire Con, I just, my apartment was just trashed with what, like boxes and. Just push it all out of the shot for the podcast. Yeah, yeah that's, that's what right it is there, right, right behind on. this. Island. But <laughs> last night when he said we should record right now, I was like, no, I don't have time. You know, I could have done that last night. Okay. Well, Wait, no, you watched two in a row. Yeah, I watched two, yeah. but I would have stopped episode two. No, you're no, too much you liability. Didn't. Sorry. Wow. Okay. Yeah, I don't want you to accidentally pollute my... Theory that we didn't really thoughts. have theories from the last one. No, but there's still a lot to discuss. But before we jump in just a quick reminder to the or announcement if you haven't heard the vcu Empire project Con. no no what? Empire Con done. the vcu is live on youtube <laughs> <Our> <laughs> <voice> <laughs> mail, <laughs> the voicemail cinematic universe fan film is live we debuted it at empire Con this past weekend but it's up on youtube now so that's our movie length fan film yep broke down for about a year and a half so please Go check it out. A lot of people worked on that. Yeah, and make sure to comment if you like the intro music. Yep. <laughs> Definitely not mid, as the kids hey. would say. Hey! I'll take Facts. it. I'll take it. TC with the gift itself. And, and you, have you watched any of it yet? I have not had you, time, no. Are you going to? I would like to. <laughs> I've, you should. I've got, I've got so much going on, but if, if Bro, I can find... there's this- parts of it, I'm like... How well if there's someone make if that there's if home. it's anything like that little Lego short of me saying get out after Jeremiah oh, it, says oh that it's a thousand times better so one of thousand, those is, thousand that was very than that. that was ve- I there's was two of very them impressed. that is like how do you not do this for a living yeah I mean that's all the, the one that Jeremiah so shared with wrong. me of him saying it was trash and me sliding out of his closet or out of his bedroom we, <laughs> why was I there in the first place I don't know but you don't think too much about it. And then uh, that was some of the, that was a highlight of my year so far. 
quite honestly. Well, if you watched a VCU, that would be the v- the the highlight of your year. So, bro, there, I'm telling you, there's times where we were watching it all together. Yeah, and we're like, what? The heck? Like, I'm not even kidding. Like, all of us were, like, I believe it. at the same time. It was I got so the, cool. I sat in the back just so I could watch everybody's reaction. Yeah. Because I've been spending a year working on this. Like, I don't... You've seen you know, it enough. Yeah, I've seen it enough of this. <laughs> but it was cool seeing the final project. So, yes, go check that out. It's, like, an hour and 26 minute long. No, it's, like, an hour movie. and 46 minutes, I thought. No. No. It wasn't it's that like long. Hour twenty seven. No. Oh, definitely. Hour and twenty six minutes and forty six seconds. Yeah. yeah. Well, the the other twenty minutes are for people who want to listen to the intro a bunch of times in a row before they start the facts. That too. <laughs> and don't forget to watch both post credit scenes, y'all. There's two. There's two. Wow. Now I don't have to Google it in the theater. Now I just know. Yeah. Ahead facts. of time. That's good. All right. Well. But yeah, Empire Commons. Daddy Palps was crunching on chips and salsa. <laughs> yeah, he was. That was true. Yeah, that's amazing. <laughs> but yes, let's jump into Toil and Trouble. Hey. Tonight. So Good old maybe we should. Potter. Andrew, what were your first? What were yeah, your thoughts on your first episode? Yeah. Since we didn't get anything quick, little. I haven't seen the first episode. Second. I only watched the second. Whatever. One. No, I'm joking. Whatever. Uh, no, it was it was really good. Um. <laughs> I, I definitely liked episode two more than episode one, but I know that every story has to have a ramp up. We have to we have to get into things. I will say that th- there are a few shots of her at the temple that are just beautiful. Like there, there was one shot when she first gets out and she's in the foreground on like the 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 right third of the screen in the droid. The first uh, HK droids there. I literally was like, yo, that's beautiful. And out loud, I said, the DP did the, did a great job. Like, they're they're killing it. Um, but there were there were some really beautiful, like, Akira Kurosawa shots, kind of reminiscent of those shots in there. Um, the explosion was way bigger than it needed to be, mm-hmm. but I get it. So, we discussed this. So, the science behind that, my theory is, all that black powder, all, was any combustible? powder... Is, is considered mm-hmm. to be flammable, so like flour, anything. Yeah. So yeah. I think that just was flammable. Yeah, yeah. No, it was it was really cool. Um, yeah, it, it, it's because I watched them back to back, so it's all kind of running together in my in mm-hmm. my brain right now. But I really liked it. Um, Hu Yang is a treat. Love Hu Yang, um, and they cool. did they did the. Huh? Yang. Uh, they they did the puppetry um really really well like it didn't feel stiff you know what i'm saying because oh, like because yeah, yeah, yeah. because like last time one of the last times we see him he's like fighting without arms i mean it's animation but he's like fighting pirates so, so is that the 25 percent <laughs> That he's missing for a probably, probably. probably. <laughs> but like uh, I, I was worried because like after seeing him do that, I'm like, okay, we can't just have this like super stiff, like barely. Mo- but they did a really good job with him. I liked I liked that a lot. Um, Hera works really well. I was anytime a character transitions from animation from one form from one you know mm-hmm. version that we know them at their mannerisms, the way their voice is, all of that. When it transfers over to live action, there's always it, it can it can be weird, right? But Mary Elizabeth Winstead, 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 she she's done a really great job with Hera so far. Um, it it like it felt like the same character to me, which was really nice. Um, Sabine was great. Um, I'm trying to think. It, it was gorgeous. Like the show was gorgeous. What, what about Azadi? Oh yeah, that was good. <laughs> I, I so I, it's funny because I had forgotten he was in Rebels because it's been so long since I've seen it. But I know I know him from Thrawn because he was he was the governor at the very beginning of Thrawn. Oh okay. You remember that he had all this stuff with Price right at the beginning. Oh yeah, he was there, and so when he came up, I was like, ah. Ah, he's in Thrawn. He was in the book, you know. So I, I'd forgotten he was in Rebels. I'd also forgotten that this. Uh, I'm. I can't. The the ceremony was in the first episode, right? 
Correct. Literally, yes. it's all one story in my brain. So I'm which is most people. Yeah. So the the senator that he leaves to talk, Jai Kel. Yeah, yeah, was from Rebels too. Yeah. I missed that, but I I figured that out later. Um, but it's a beautiful. It was it's freaking beautiful, and I I love that they did the loft cat practically. Mm-hmm. That was a fantastic choice. Um, but yeah, this there are, there are so many beautiful shots. The effects were great. Um, there's a moment in the second episode that I particularly just love to death that we'll, I'll end up geeking out about later, but, um, yeah, it was great. I mean, the first episode for me was like a solid seven and a half, eight out of 10. And I don't want to go any higher because I know that there are going to be episodes that are going to blow this one out of the water, but I, I really enjoyed it. Um, we didn't rank the last one, Jeremiah. I just thought about that. No. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> you did it again but yeah no it was really it was really cool um i it was so funny so obviously in classic disney fashion the trailers are pretty much all taken from the first episode first two episodes yeah i mean but a lot of it was the first episode and there were, and the third one i kept uh i kept going oh that's from the trailer that's from the trailer like out loud and at one point mckay was like so do you do you want a cookie and i was like okay i'll shut up (laughs) (laughs) but it was like it was like the them coming up on the clam ship and then Mm -hmm. and i was like oh and it was funny because uh he was like it's an old jedi code and i literally was like they're all dead (laughs) i know exactly where this is going you know because of the trailer but um Mm -hmm. it was it was a lot of fun a lot of fun cool yeah well, episode two. What were you guys' overall thoughts on episode two? My favorite episode of this the season. So yeah. Far. <laughs> yeah. So far. Me too. What? It was me too. It was just very, you were just episode. like, yeah. No, I was just like thinking. I don't know. I really enjoyed the first one. Yeah. There's so much hate on the internet about these two episodes. Wait, really? Yeah. Oh, okay. People need to, dude. Uh, you, I I don't know what you're talking about because I haven't looked into it. But you wanna you want another? I the I think the big issue is them making Sabine force sensitive. But she's not. Like, but is she though? But she's she really not. But she is. I mean, so. yeah. But like, you heard Hu Yang. Like, We're jumping ahead. But like, you heard him. Well, he was like, well, right. But why would Ahsoka take a Padawan? Because there aren't any of the like, Jedi. Yeah, but you you can't be a non force sensitive Jedi. Mean, Kanan was training her. I, I mean, like I don't know. I think it's that's a, not. I, I I don't think that it, it's literal. I don't. I really don't. But she don't. has force dreams, though. Yeah, but other people that aren't force sensitive can have force dreams. The force can just be like, "Hey, here's a dream." Have yeah, but fun. have we seen that before? No, but like... So how do you know? How do you know? <laughs> because... Because in the EU, they no, do it all the it's time. Just, I, I don't... <laughs> I Okay, but why would they be doing this like this if it wasn't true? Like, why don't they just keep her straight Mandalorian? Like, why do they have to make this storyline? Use story the words Padawan and then... Use Padawan. And she, even the first ep- episode, she's like, you know, being a Jedi... Is hard, and she's like, "Well, then I would have been the best Jedi ever." Like, if she just did what I, I really told her. think like, that they're just re- they're using those terms to refer to an apprenticeship, just like a she's teaching her how to fight but, and stuff. But I don't think so. Sabine is already a capable fighter. Like, what is? Yeah, I like, what is that? I, don't do that? I don't know. I I don't know. I think she is based on what we've given for sensitive. But like but Hu Yang said, really she's that. she has like oh. fifty midi chlorians, and that's enough to give her a force stream, but not enough to. I just think, I I really just think you ain't straight up said that she's the worst Jedi. I really just, I, I just think that people need to freaking calm their horses. Okay, I don't know if that's the reason why people don't like it though. I just, dude, I'm a lot so... of the people that are voting that they don't like it don't know enough about Star Wars, dude. And here's the other thing: I'm going off a tangent, but I read a I read an article today Let's go. that Star Wars theory apparently has openly said that if Deborah Chow, Chow and the writer, whatever the, the person's name was, are at the helm, because there's been these rumors that Obi Wan season two might be happening. 
if they're involved, they need to be ousted from Lucasfilm. Like it was, it was so intense. He was like, they're ruining. Oh, cause he hates the Kenobi. Series. Yeah. And I'm like, people need to calm the frick down. Just like, just calm down. Like, I don't, I don't like, look, I don't like this, the, the sequels. I don't, <laughs> I think it was, a, I think it was a missed opportunity. Obviously we're getting part of that opportunity in this show. Thrawn should, there's so many things, but it's just like, just, we just need to, we just need to breathe. Like, it's breathe. not like Ahsoka, they, they took her in a completely different direction where Sabine, like I get it. The force sensitivity thing is, is freaking, it's a little weird, but like. W- w- would you agree that if she does turn out to be force sensitive, that that's like a bad direction for Sabine's character? Not necessarily. I don't think so. If it's Why done, not? if it's done well, I mean, because she was already a good fighter. Like it, it's it's possible that with everything going on, it, Kanan never noticed it. Ezra never really noticed it, and then things finally settled like, down, and the sook was like, wait, oh, "Wait, you got the force." Well, and, and the thing is, like, that's the thing is, like, because she doesn't have that much of the force. Like, Kanan wouldn't waste his time on her. That's true. Because in his mind, like the reason why he started training Ezra because of how much yeah of the force I'm just he saying like naturally you know I think it I think we're gonna we're obviously gonna find more find out more about their story because they've done a lot of hinting in the first two episodes and no explaining and if there's anything I know about Filoni, mm-hmm. he'll we'll get the explanation at some point you know but like I don't think it ruins her character like Luke. In episode eight, like, like I'm just here, yeah, not, yeah, no, not doing that. no, we're not talking a dumpster fire. I but no, oh, uh, okay, whatever. Well, I I think you can actually explain Luke's like storyline because of what happened. Like it's a a thing of regret and depression and stuff. Like that's something you can sure. actually like explain. You can with explain the st- Sabine story. being force sensitive if she has a minutely small amount of force sensitivity. Because with but that, I'm saying there's no need for that though. Well, like you could have kept her as she was, as a good fighter. That, and but why does she have to be a Padawan to Ahsoka? I think like it biggest, just it's just like a weird. I'm just here for Thrawn, man. <laughs> I mean, we all are, <laughs> but <laughs> but like I th- I think the whole thing is they're trying to figure out Ahsoka's relationship and and her relationship. And and the thing that does kind of take me out of the moment a little bit is we never see Ahsoka this aggressive towards anyone. Okay, now that that's that no, because in Mando season two, she takes out the whole town by herself. No, I'm not talking about fighting. No, 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 no. I'm I know what you're talking about. Her personality. Like, her personality is super uh, well, dry. Then, say that. I, yeah, that's like I mean, aggressive. That's I'm said. like aggressive is like attacking. So it's interesting that you say that because I thought that in Mando season two, I was like, this is Ahsoka, but this is, this is different. But if you, mm. okay. So like, obviously she's not going to be Clone Wars Ahsoka. So then you, yeah. you have her walking away. It's a life changing thing, right? She goes through the siege of Mandalore. That's another really big life change, life changing event. And then of course in Rebels, She's a lot more stoic than she used to be. So I can see yeah. I can see this as like a natural progression as she gets older, as she goes through a bunch of stuff. But there is a part of me, Drew, that agrees with you. I'm like Cause the thing is like, yes, in a man in the Rebels, she's super stoic, wise. Yeah. Like very wise and like separated from the rebels. Like she's part of them, but not really part of the crew. Yeah. Now she's like kind of part of the crew. And she's talking crap about Sabine behind her back and with Hera. And like it just seems like there's this like she she doesn't know how to handle Sabine at all. Well, and I don't feel like that's not really her character. Well, but but think about what we have to inform that though. She was never knighted. She never really had a ton of experience teaching another person, let alone someone as as hard headed as and as bullish as she said as ahsoka can be like you mean sabine can well be. they both can be that way oh yeah. you know so i i think 
I think this is this is more believable than Luke to me, character wise. No, I don't, I'm not saying it isn't believable, but it just keeps like kind of putting me off. And maybe that's because like the most Ahsoka I've like dived into is like the book, and then like also like what we got in Clone Wars and stuff. Like it's very like happy go lucky so good like obviously she's had her struggles but even like throughout the the fight in season seven like she was very much so like talking crap and like like the whole thing with maul when she's like oh if if anakin would have been here yeah you wouldn't even last this long like it was like more sassy there are like then there are a few moments in 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 the first two episodes where that kind of peeks out a little bit just not as much as like i would like yeah I don't know, not to say it's not going to open up. Yeah, I think and, we're really dealing with that transition from animation to live action. And, like, like everyone's kind of being jolted by that a little bit in their own ways. Because, hmm. I mean, it, it's a transition. Like, it's 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 kind of yeah. weird. I mean, the same thing happened with Cad Bane for me. Yeah, Cad Bane felt the same. <laughs> me i don't know same thing with the grand inquisitor chopper was ah, the exact same yes oh we yeah. talk about chopper chopper was hilarious in this episode and so good chopper was great apparently it there's a lot awesome. of people online that don't like chopper and i'm like you're all losers just kidding just kidding if you don't like chopper you're entitled to that opinion i wasn't being serious but chopper <laughs> is amazing jeremiah chopper yeah he's my favorite droid so okay anyways but yeah i don't know Either way, back to what I was saying, I liked it. I liked this episode. I thought it was good. I liked the development between both characters, and I I like the route that they're going with these two Jedi and Apprentice, like the bad guys. Oh, Balin and Shin? Yeah, yeah. like I like that he was like, I don't want to kill Ahsoka because there's not a lot of us out there. Yeah. Like, there's like, if it feels different than a typical bad jedi that turned bad you know what's like it is a little different you know what's interesting and maybe maybe it's because i'm i'm just in both stories right now but so i'm reading outbound flight and one of the main characters of that is joris sabaoth which was the person who was cloned in the the expanded thrawn trilogy you remember the 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 crazy jedi clone Mm -hmm. this is the original jedi master during the prequels and there are a lot of similarities between balin and him sabaoth Mm -hmm. is is really arrogant and kind of outspoken but he has that like i'm fully dedicated to the jedi order but i have to preserve us as a race and we have to rule people because we're right it's our rightful place yeah like it's it's really strange. There's some similarities there where they're like both completely devoted to the Jedi, but they're willing to do things that aren't Jedi like to accomplish their goals. So it's interesting. It's just, it's, it's it's very interesting. I I love the character. Shin looks like she always has to say something. Like she she's got something really sassy to say, but she doesn't say it. I like her character mm-hmm. too. I think she looks menacing. Oh yeah, like, it's great. She did a good job. All right, Jeremiah, your thoughts? On Shin? On episode two. Well, it was the best episode so far, but it's only been two episodes. But I don't know. I, I'm i not a fan of the direction of Sabine's character. Okay. Like, I, think it's, I think it's just a pointless You're thing. You're talking about the force sensi- sensitivity. Force sensitivity thing, and, like, it just doesn't fit for me. It doesn't fit her character. Yeah. Like, sure, you can have some sort of conflict between Ahsoka and Sabine. Mm-hmm. Sure. But, like, it being over Ahsoka and them having a bad master Padawan relationship and then that failing, and then, like, why couldn't it be, like, right after the end of the the war, they go out to try to find Ezra, and then... And it doesn't work. It doesn't work, yeah. and that's what drives a wedge between them. Like I could like do that, because then what? She shows up with the the map on, in the little ball thing, and like it brings hope to like revisit rescuing Ezra, finding Ezra. 
and then them trying to patch up a broken relationship with this new hope because finding Ezra is built on hope. Yeah. That kind of thing. But like, it's not that. And so for me, the Sabine stuff is more of a distraction. I'm like, every time I jump, like in episode two, once it was going to, to Sabine, I was like, Ugh, I don't care. Like go back. I want to know what's going on with the witch and like magic so and, and this other galaxy that's out there and all this stuff. Like that stuff is more interesting to me than, do you and like, I think it was the thing about Star Wars that like, I just realized it's kind of lame is that people can get healed from massive wounds so easily <laughs> that like, there's no point in like having something where they get hurt okay. at the end of an episode. Yeah, the like, next episode. Uh, can we talk about how Qui-Gon went down to the same wound almost? Yeah, but he, he got hit in an artery. A though, over so that was okay. a little different. Freaking, he has more force <laughs> sensitivity. <laughs> and don't get me started on the force healing thing. But anyways, I, but, my question for you, Jeremiah, do you think that there are too many main characters in this show? No. Mm. No. Really? Do you you don't I I I think that there's not enough. What? We huh? we need we need Zeb in there. We need all these we need to see Thrawn, we need to see Arlani, we need to see Eli Vanto. Bring all these people. I I No, no, no. I main, don't think it's but main characters. Because right now, yeah, these are main characters. No, 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 no. It's like they're, Arlani they're... isn't. A, a, she, I wouldn't consider Vanto and Arlani main characters. They're 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 secondary characters that have a lot of focus on them. But like, I, I would. He's talking about. So, like, so then, list your main characters that you're. Uh, what he's I, implying that Sabine and Ahsoka have the same role in this show. That's right what I'm now. saying. I think that like it's not just a Ahsoka show. It's a Sabine Ahsoka. show. That's what show. I'm saying. Do you think that? The, so much focus on Sabine is detracting from it being the literal Ahsoka show. Yeah. Okay. So that that uh, maybe I should have worded it differently. But <laughs> you said main characters. Like, well, okay, I mean, well, real, got, realistically, yeah, Ahsoka, Sabine, Hera, Balin, Shin, and Morgan. Like, there's six people there. I'm like, if those are the main characters, like, I want. Where's Hera's kid? That's what I want to know. He's gonna be in here because he has a Lego mini minifigure. So he's he's in the New Republic nursery, like daycare. <laughs> like no, nah, dude, he's like he's at least like eight years and, old. And remember, like they said, at every level level within the New Republic, there's ex Imperials. So some Imperial <laughs> warlord is taking care of Jason Sandula right now. <laughs> I love that line. Like I love that because that is exactly what America did with the Nazis. We took so many high level Nazis and used them for things. We did. We and did do that. Kept them. And that was a definitely stab towards that concept. I don't know anything about that. I just know like they all moved to Argentina or something like that. Well, that's the ones that escaped, but like literally NASA was ran by Nazis a hundred percent. I've and always said them. NASA is a worst funded thing in the world like why do we waste our money on space exploration like no cares? now it's space force well then that's space force not i don't care about the galaxy <laughs> far far we, away you know <laughs> that we're Come never going to be able to go to well, ever it's, like it's so, so space force isn't actually about exploration it's about defending our space no i know yeah. that but i'm saying that's nasa so like oh NASA, there's yeah. like this there's all these galaxies out there that we we'll really need to see. spend time exploring the ocean more so than space because I feel Facts. like I feel like there's some crazy stuff down there that could benefit us, like Atlantis. Yeah, Milo's <laughs> Milo's down there. Um, Milo and the but crew. Anyway. But anyways, yeah, um, I I love that concept. The whole thing was super cool. What, but I'm yeah, sorry, I, what I con what you're talking saying. about NASA the, or the, the workers at the <laughs> oh, oh yeah, yeah, okay. The okay, whole I'm back. I'm back now. <laughs> yard concept was super cool. Well, one, first of all, I think the guy kinda yes, what he said was true, but I don't think you can consider like like an average day worker in a shipyard to be like ex Imperial. They're just people for well, trying to provide for the family. Like they're not I know what he was saying. He was saying that, but like I think it's misplaced to say that, like, because you, like, put, like, 
panels on a Star Destroyer that makes you a full-fledged Imperial warlord, like pro Empire. Like, no, the, the people are just. <laughs> That's all it took to be to an Imperial warlord, huh? Like, I'm like, just, just people are just trying to provide for their families. Like, they're right. not. They don't adhere to an ideology. So I think... Well, and that's what he said. But then there was people that were deeper that were well, actually right. part of that. But like, I don't think that... Because they the don't average, arrest everyone. I don't think the average worker can be considered uh, ex-imperial. They're just citizens that are working. Well, and, and like... And that's like part of the repurpose program is because they're... People that are literally like, oh, I joined the war because what else was I going to do? My whole planet was taken over. I have to obviously just join these people to survive. And it doesn't mean they're bad. It just means like that's what they had to do. And like there's countries during World War II that did the exact same thing for that reason. Like they couldn't do anything else. And that's a whole concept between both. Is like that's what like Star Wars is very mimicking. So I don't know. I think it's a really cool concept. I really like it. But yes, <laughs> Jeremiah. I think the biggest thing about this show that I can agree with you on is that Sabine is becoming more of a Sabine show so far than it is Ahsoka. And I understand why people don't like that concept. So but I, I actually, like, unlike you, though, Jeremiah, I actually like, I like seeing more Sabine. Well, I, I like seeing more Sabine. I just don't like how they're characterizing her and, like, how the oh. drama is centered around her being... Force-sensitive? Uh, so Force-sensitive. She's really Force-sensitive, huh? Sensitive? I'm joking. It was, I'm sorry. And, like, their conflict that has nothing to do with Ezra, like, like, yeah, I don't know. So... I, I do, I, I do think, I do think you're you have a valid point. So, f I guess we're jumping ahead a little bit, but is the scene the same? No, the, the, the two things that are different: the it, cloak is a different color, and the time and she doesn't of day. Have the staff. Well, and the time of day. Well, that could just be a well, but so it's but like shot for shot, if you see them side by side, like they're so similar. Right. Like, so I, I, I don't know if this is like they did the same thing twice years apart or if it's like Filoni really wanted to kind of retcon the end of that. But then it's like you're cannibalizing the end of a show. So I, so so, I, I can get behind like a change in the color of a cloak. Yeah. Like just sure. for artistic design. Fine, and the, whatever, and the staff. But, sure. but to not have a staff like that's like. Yeah. I mean, that's a pretty big. Yeah. That's a, that's like a weird thing. Like why did, why don't you just give her a staff? Yeah. But then so, it'd be like, it's weird. Like I don't know. I that aside, I could, I could very much get behind them going off once, not finding Ezra. Stuff going really poorly between the two of them because of that, and then now we're here. That would make a lot of sense, and it would make a lot more sense happened. than what we have. But like her hair comment, like oh, nice haircut or whatever. Like also, I told Micaiah when we were watching that she, she was say sitting that down. in the, the first one. No. Yeah. That wasn't they didn't have any dialogue. Yeah. So when I so when she pulled out her knife, she's sitting there, she pulls out her knife, I was like The Mulan moment. I, yeah. I literally the, Micaiah the said Kanan that and moment. I and I started uh I started singing the Mulan song. Yeah, Christina Aguilera one that she yeah. sang. Anyways, that's uh, not what the point it's supposed to be a Canaan parallel. Well, sure. Kanan's yeah, it's also Mulan. Thing. But yeah. So she she cuts her hair and I I looked at Micaiah and I was like, Remember, she did one cut. Cause that's all you see. You just shing. And then she picks up her helmet. She did one cut. I was like, I want you to remember that when you see her hair in a second. She had freaking layers and contouring going on. I was like, no, the vibro blade. Yeah. It automatically does layers. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, I, I always, I always love that in shows when because there's so many characters that do that, and then their mm -hmm. hair's like freaking just L'Oreal flawless in the yeah. next scene. I'm like, I've had my hair cut before. It's not that easy. <laughs> Anyways, all right. So yeah. Anyways. But yeah, me, Jeremiah, when I watched I, it a second time with <laughs> Stephanie, we both started singing that song. Yeah. I So, Jeremiah, I'm actually really happy that you have this opinion. Because it, it, I don't like what she's doing. With no, no, no. Me. I'm just happy that, like, th someone's different between the, the 
like there's some differing opinions here because it's going to mean that the rest of the episodes are going to be really interesting. Okay. I, I, I just, it's way more interesting hoping... if when it's like this, than if it's like all three of us are like, yeah, 100 out of 100. You know what I'm saying? Like this makes good discussion. Right. So I just hope that their <laughs> issues get worked out. <laughs> <laughs> Daddy Pelp says maybe she's born with it. Maybe it's, it's a fiber blade. blade. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. Um, that was really I good. Can't with Daddy Pelp, sir. <laughs> well done. <laughs> well done, sir. Um, I was just thinking about something that happened at Empire Con. We'll tell you later, uh, Andrew. All right. <laughs> um, but <laughs> I know what you're talking. About. <laughs> um. um <laughs> Is it possible yeah, so that I, every time I'm, I'm on, just, we get way off topic? Probably. Yes. Yes. I'm just hoping, though, I'm that that their relationship gets resolved quickly. Because I don't want this to be a constant. Like, yeah. I, think, yeah. like, I really so think it's lame. already I think it's already done. By her calling her p- Padawan at that, that part, and she went into hyperspace, I think that is... But, like, if they're going to start done. training again, like, Sabine's going to get all upset, like... Like, you're pushing me too hard, like, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, dude, just hop on a pergola and go to this other galaxy and, like, save Ezra. Like, I don't know. Grab a Twizzler. So, okay, okay. that being said, I should say Grab a I am I am bowing my head in shame that I don't think that the Inquisitor is Ezra anymore. <gasps> because how did he get all the way from the other galaxy back to our galaxy when, like doesn't make wouldn't make sense but also it doesn't make sense because wh- how is it that thrawn is all the way in this other galaxy but he's going back and forth because in mandalorian season three all those ex-imperials were have seen him and interacted with him but i i don't he's think, in another galaxy i don't think that they have a, i don't i think paleon no, was I covering think, for him yeah hard but what but how would he know because i already watched that scene that today it was clearly him just trying to stalling. Cover him. Yeah, because I had the same. Yeah, question. but how would he know that Thrawn's alive? Maybe Thrawn's gotten some commu- communication well, because, like, this- well, Morgan Elsbeth knows he's alive. Yeah, that's the thing. Is she's a witch. No, hey, <laughs> yeah, she's a person, and her she, name is she, Morgan Elsbeth. Okay, she uses magic with a K. Okay, like this is not uh, so. <laughs> like, why? Wow. I sorry, Drew. I I looked over to the chat and all I see is Babu freak in the middle of the screen. I was like, dude, where did he come follow. from? Anyways, she could have spread the word. She gets a little a well, little witch like, message, think, and then she's like, because hey. the thing is, she had to go and get more of the Imperials to the remnants to help build this ship to go get Thrawn. So, are you saying that Morgan Elsbeth has recruited these ex Imperials? Hundred percent. Oh yeah. She so she's the mastermind behind that, that council. Yes. No, ah, not the whole no, no, council. No, 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 no. Not the but, shadow council. But but like how, if if Thrawn has not been in communication with any of these people at all, they've never seen him. Why would they just all get on board that Thrawn's their leader? Because he because he was Admiral. he was the highest leader before. I'm grasping but why, at straws why would they here. Assume- why would they and assume that he's Thrawn, alive? Jeremiah. They read all the novels. They know he's he's BA. Hey, so the thing is, what I'm thinking is that because Morgan Espress has told them, hey, he's still out there. He's alive. I need funding. I need people to help me go get him. They're willing she to. She said, I'm building a big Uber ring. Yes. To go get him. The Ring of Sauron, apparently. Sion, not Sauron. Know, Very different When she first experience. said it, I was like, Very wait, different wait, experience. What? I know. When she said that, I was like, wait, what? <laughs> but yeah, so, so... I'm just confused about how th- these remnants are following Thrawn, but he's trapped in another galaxy. Maybe he has WhatsApp. Well, the thing is, is he trapped? How yeah? How, how is he supposed to get back? So like, I think he, okay, I think okay. he is because no hyperdrive in the. Okay, okay, so they're they're dealing with two problems. One, the range. There's not a single hyperdrive in the galaxy that can make it that far. There's just no way. I mean, we're talking. You saw how long that little gold line was. I mean, that, you put that to scale. Whew, that's at least mm-hmm. a few hundred football fields, if not way more. And then two. <laughs> Probably more than that. 
inter <laughs> intergalactic travel is as we know from the chaos is extremely perilous so which means which makes sense as to why she has jedi because i'm willing to bet that she's going to need them to guide them through that's also why the freaking ring is the size of texas because well, everything is bigger in texas. yeah yeah <laughs> so um I also think with that too, she has how many hyperdrives connected to that one ring? Nine. Yeah, it's a lot. I think they said it's they said nine of of a super star destroyer yeah. ones. Yeah, super star destroyer. But like, yeah, he said SSD, and I was like, oh, whoa. Yeah. Anyways, but like, so, I don't know. We're like, we're jumping all over the place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We've never, we normally don't do this if you're new to us. We usually go scene by scene. Yeah, normally Andrew doesn't derail things like he is tonight. No, he does. Yeah, that's, <laughs> true. <laughs> that's true. Um, so let's just jump into scene by scene because so we're never going to get back there. So first opening scene, Ahsoka is looking out at the city of Lothal, which yeah. looks crisp. Oh, yeah. And Quispy. um at first, because she's like hearing these things, and it was kind of like foggy, like they kind of faded in from the white. And I was like, "Is she having a flashback? Like, are we getting something?" But no, she's just hearing the dream that Sabine is having, and she wakes up Sabine, and she's like, "Oh, I like crap hit the fan. Sorry, folks. Like, obviously that was gonna happen." But she says there's two galaxies. So that clears up what we were thinking about. Like, because first episode, I was like, it looks like a separate galaxy. But like, is it that line just kind of like, oh, we're just zooming into this one spot on the main galaxy. And it says bigger out here. But no, it's an actual galaxy, which is different than the unknown regions, which is weird because I thought yeah. the unknown regions. Was Every, be the everyone kind of thought that the unknown regions were going to be the thing. And then I saw that and I was like, oh, we, we're going way out. We're going and so big time. Un, un, unknown regions. Yeah. So, well, apparently they know about it because the Jedi kids talk about Peridia. So it's known. I think that's more so the, the, the path, not the galaxy. I thought he was referencing the legend of the path to other galaxies rather than the galaxy. Well, he's, no, because he specifically said pathway to Peridia. Ah, okay, okay. Thank so, you, thank you for that. I don't know if Peridia, Peridia is the galaxy or if it's like that location, like the exit point. Um, but the Jedi apparently know of it. Um, so there's two galaxies. We'll get into it later when we get to the temple thing. But like, okay, we got two galaxies and Sabine explains that they the droid took the map and destroyed all of her tech and she didn't make a copy or anything so there's no no like the map anymore there's no leads anymore and so um she Ahsoka is upset because Sabine's like oh let me come with and Sabine's like you've done enough like, which is something we've never heard Ahsoka really talk like that before. Like, be kind of, like, genuinely upset at someone and, like, take a shot at them like that. And so that was kind of like, oh, dang. And so, obviously, you'd be upset, like, if your only lead is Yeah, yeah I'd be thing. pretty... I'd be really mad, and, actually. <laughs> and, the real, and the reality is, like, I'm getting the vibe that the only person... Ooh, the vibe. That's understands the weight of the problem and potential threat is Ahsoka and no one's really believing her. And so... Well, like, Hera... I feel like Hera does. Well, she's enough to like, yeah, if you want help with this, go help Sabine. Or go get help from Sabine. But like... Yeah, if it, if it were a real thing, though, she probably would have dropped what she was doing. Right. Yeah, okay, I see what you're saying. So, like, she's just kind of yeah. like, yeah, I believe you, but like, I'm being cautious, like, who knows, like... This is the first time I heard Thrawn since the Battle of Lothal. Like, why are you bringing him up type of thing? Um, so Ahsoka is upset and leaves. But, like, she leaves because Sabine says she took out one of the droids. So she goes, we'll find out, she goes to her apartment to find the droid. So that's the end of that scene. And then we jump to 
the temple thing. And so we get to that planet from the trailer where it's like the temple thing with the red trees. Yep. Um, we're finally there. I told you it was a map. Yeah, a map of the world between worlds. They have to travel no, between not, the two worlds no. of one galaxy. No, you can't <laughs> pull this out, Jeremiah. I just want to. I just want to bring it back. I I told you it was a map. Anyways, so they go there. Um, Balin places the map cylinder or a sphere on the thing in the middle and it rotates and kind of like places itself in the thing and then Morgan comes later um, but they mention I think the name of this planet is Cetos I think that's what they called it Cetos Sounds C- like a sounds oh. like a, a corn chip. You got some of those Cetos, Cetos chips, like a Frito Lay in it, whatever. You <laughs> are on one today, aren't you? Yeah, I it's guess. a shirt. It's a shirt. Yeah, I'm feeling feeling very his, very bright his, and colorful. His today. 80s 80s beach. Uh, I love it. Shirt that he's got. Um, yes, TK nine four six. You can do that if you'd like. Um. But yeah, so Asitos, and so then they just call in Morgan, but he looks up. Yeah. And he sees a humpback a perg- whale. A pergil. In the sky. So, so this is my theory that the pergil are originally from the other galaxy, and they created this path okay. to this temple point. So. Because people from that galaxy created this temple they followed their migratory patterns yeah so or mm. you well, think it's migratory or you think they just no i think it is i think it's them I just being being big space whales with tentacles you know as they normally do and i think I, that would make sense because they took thrawn and they migrated yeah. backwards I think it was a migration thing. That's cool. I think it was a migration thing, and I think that because it's known that the first hyperdrive or hyperspace travelers learned from the Pergil, mm-hmm. and so I think that's part of the part of the way that they figured that out, or at least the people from the other galaxy figured it out to come to the Star Wars galaxy. So, do you think that the people from the other galaxy, when they arrived to our galaxy and explained it? They're like, this is the way. Oh, shh. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's what the, that's the, the super get out. That's the super get out. Get, get out. out. Get out. What, what if the Mandalorians yeah. are originally from the other galaxy and they're the original time travelers? And, or time, time, time travelers. Well, galaxy actually, travelers. Actually, technically speaking, if you've seen Interstellar... There's okay, some. There's no, 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 no. There's, there's. If you're, you're traveling to a different galaxy, time travel is involved. Like it's not. That's it's true. time isn't standard. And so, if Sabine is force sensitive and she's a Mandalorian, maybe she can like drive a pergil. Like, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> the door opens up. Yeah. Like, what if she has a connection with the pergil because the Mandalorians are originally from the other galaxy and they. You yeah, but you didn't want her to be force sensitive. But if it's the force sensitivity of a different galaxy, then it's completely different, and that's fine. Oh, whoa, weird. Okay, <laughs> all right. Probably not going to happen. But Daddy pops in the chat. What if Ray met Skywalker, not Skywalker? Ooh. <laughs> Yeah, that's a that's a thing. Uh, yeah. Queen of Sith Lord says, according to legends, yeah, Mandos came from Coruscant. Well, as I always say, the EU doesn't matter. <laughs> mm. <laughs> but yes, yeah, space whales. I think that they're the connection between the two. And so, if this the uh, what is it called? The Eye of what is it? Sion. The Eye of Sion. 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 <laughs> If that's what like Morgan and them use to travel, I'm willing to bet that Ahsoka and Sabine and maybe other people are gonna use the Pergil 
to go there. Yeah. I was going to say, how is Ahsoka going to get there? Like, once they have the map, what are they going to do? Because we know Thrawn's on that ship at some point. We know that. We don't know that. Yeah, we do. Yeah, we do. Yes, oh, we do. Yeah. No, he's in the trailer. trailer. He's on that ship. Because when the, the, the interior showed up, I literally looked at McKay. I was like, that's the ship that Thrawn's on. He yeah. gets there at some point. So when we're in that ship at the end and the hologram pops up, I thought that was Thrawn at first popping in. I did too. Say, I got really oh, excited. Yeah. So, so like they leave somehow, or at least Morgan does. I think, yeah, I think Ahsoka's ship gets dragged by the Purgle too. Either that or they just go get Thrawn and Ezra is with them and they come back. <laughs> like, that could just be a thing, too. I don't know. We'll see. Um, But we'll talk about that more when they, we go back to the next scene with at the temple. But uh, we then go to Ahsoka checking out Sabine's living quarters at the communication tower. Ooh, very, and... I, very iRobot, this scene. True. I didn't even think about that. Oh yeah, you ever seen iRobot, Jeremiah? I have. But I mean, like you were Sunny. You remember where Sunny's? He's hiding. This, this hiding. He's hiding yeah, like it. in that room. I mean, it's it's, it's it's similar. Uh, whatever. It yeah, felt there's four thousand movies where someone's hiding in a room. So I'm sorry, I didn't automatically. It's not a robot. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I think we learned something new about Ahsoka's abilities. She yeah. has the force ability to force like, force rewind. She just hits the rewind. Well, there's a term for it. Yeah, Maybe the, yeah. The Chackens, and I, I heard it today, and then I completely forgot forgot what I, I also heard, heard it. it today and forgot. But it. like, she's she can force sense echo. The, yes, for, I think that's yes. Force like Cal, echo. Cal Kestis has that ability. Yes. Um. So she's able to sense the past and history of events of uh objects and places and so that was really yeah, interesting she, she has a lot of powers in these first two episodes like the ability to sense sabine's dream the force echo thing like there's a lot she does and i'm like yo she's she's been doing stuff she's she's got her skill points up yeah so i like that we see that she has a new ability that we haven't seen before um so that's cool that she can investigate things in such a way that others can't um so she goes into the apartment. <clears throat> the loath cat is like oh, freaking I love that thing so much. Chilling. Yeah. It reminds me so much of Cheeto. The Grand Admiral himself. And so she's just going around looking through stuff, finds the the message thing, I don't know, hollow message thing from Ezra. And then you see a leg, some legs hanging down from the ceiling. Like just I'm like, were those legs? Like, I was like, and then it cuts to the cat, and then the cat like hisses, and then like thing it jumps down, and then they start. Well, I wouldn't say they're gonna start to fight, but Ahsoka dealt with. It's not much pretty, of a fight. Pretty and after like two seconds, um, and so cool. So she grabs the head. <laughs> just the way, it yeah, yeah. So cool, you know. She just the streets the droid. Cool. Yeah, it was it's pretty. It's pretty neat. Yep. So, uh, bring it to Sabine, and she's like, "Oh yeah, I can just recover the navigation history of this droid. Like, it's, it might blow up in her face and kill us all, but we can just unplug it before it does that." And so, I thought it was so funny. This has been using ways because it sucks. I, you know, it might blow up in your face if you. Anyways, I'm sorry. I guess I don't know. The it's reference. a navigation app. I'm. Oh. Uh, it would have been better if I said Apple Maps because Apple Maps really sucks. But, anyways. Bob, all Google Maps. Hey. Because Google rules the world, basically. Yeah, so. they sure do. Uh, but I thought it was very, very funny when they're like, "Should we do this now?" And Hera is like. Yeah, let's do it now. And oh, yeah. he's like, because you're a hologram. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was the funniest thing yeah, ever. I thought it was so a funny. Guy. <laughs> and so she's just doing her thing, like playing like a 
like a Game Boy, basically, what she seemed like she was doing. She was just pushing buttons. And this is the old Game Boy. Old Game Boy. When you had to connect it via, like, not even USB cords to the other one, you know? Yeah, it was like USB-A, micro USB-A mm-hmm. or something, yeah. And so, right when it's about to explode, Hu Yang unplugs it, but it was enough time to get the data, and he was at Corellia. At Corellia. So that's uh, Han Solo's home planet where the Falcon was made as well as other Imperial ships and stuff. So, and I, we, they mentioned here that, oh, that's where Morgan Elsbeth works. So yes, I did hear that before, like looking into her character, like a long time ago, that's kind of like what they just gave as her backstory that she worked on Corellia with ships and stuff. So that's cool. And I think specifically they said later on that it was hyperdrive stuff that they were making that she was like involved with specifically. Yep. So. Yep, um, yep, yep. <laughs> ask Jeeves. <G's. laughs> uh, the good old days, ask Jeeves. Uh, so, but all right, we're going to Croya. And so Hera's like, all right, I'll meet you there. Um, and she leaves, Hu Yang leaves, but Hera and Sabine have uh, basically a mother-daughter moment of this Hera being Mother Hera, which was a good mm-hmm. trying to encourage Hera and help her to build confidence, which is weird because like Sabine is very usually a very confident person, but you can tell she has a lot of she's hurt, been hurt hurt in the past since the Battle of Thal. So because like she resolved a lot of that. Uh, at the end of I like, kind of towards the end of season three, or season what season was it when she had that duel with Kanan? Three, was that end of three. I think so. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So like she resolved a lot of her issues then, but obviously a bunch of new stuff that we haven't fully seen yet has contributed to her because she's like brought up in the Discord. She's like probably like 30 years old now like she's not a teenager anymore yeah and so she has still has stuff to deal with so look i'm 29 and i still have a lot of stuff i need to deal with so i don't blame her probably not as much as her like being in the middle of a war well like. no but I mean, at least i get it <laughs> um but yeah so that scene ends and then we Go back to the temple on Cetos. Uh, Morgan Elsbeth arrives, and her ship is kind of cool. That gold ship. Yeah, it's like a trapezoid. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know what it is, Made but it just looks cool. So I guess, I don't know, if is that just like a... That's a ship? A witch, a witch ship? I, like Witch ship? Yeah, like... No, 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 witch ship. Yeah, the witch ship. No, witch ship. Ah. Yeah, which ship. <laughs> <Church is over. laughs> um, but like, I don't know, I thought it was cool. And so she just I don't know uh, if it's I don't I don't think it's first of all, did we gloss over or is that in the first episode when she she says she's a night sister, descendant of the night sister? Gosh, it's the whole thing. It's just one big story. Anyways. And so that one of the things I asked last episode but last episode was I always thought that the witches of Dathomir mm-hmm. were like, it was their species. Like, that's what they were able to do because of their species. Mm-hmm. But I guess other people can, that are force sensitive, can just do magic, I guess. Why do you, why do you say that? Well, because magic that, that they use With a is, K. is a part of the force. The dark like, side. It's a force ability. Yeah. It's a force ability. Yeah. So like it's like Sith alchemy. So I guess this any force sensitive person can learn magic. Yeah. Okay. I, so like, I mean I was, it's I, it's a I, it, I just always thought that it was their species. No Oh oh no no no. So well because Do you want me to say it? Do you want me to say it? In the EU. Yeah, I mean there's there's a there's a whole branch of the dark side, especially with Sith alchemy that is pretty much the same thing as like the magic we see in canon but it's it's very specifically a branch of the dark side like it's not a light side thing right so well i mean even when she said in the last episode that she was a witch the 
quote unquote Sith Padawan. I don't know if they're Sith. We don't really know. They're not Sith. They're not Sith. There's no way. Well, okay. Well, bad person. They're Dark Jedi. Dark Jedi. She was even scared of her. Because she found out that she was a witch, she like was cautious of her. Didn't want to really. Well, this because well, they were you would too if you met a witch. Like, <laughs> well, that's what I'm saying. Like with a K. But like, but like my my thing is like it's just it just shows you how. I mean, they even were, if you are dabbling with the dark side a little bit, you don't even want to touch that stuff. Well, like no, I think it, it's because like that dark side magic stuff was extremely powerful. Like. It, it was so powerful that I'm almost a little surprised that Grievous was able to wipe them out the way he did. Like, there's a part of me that's like, ah. but then again, the average Night Sister wasn't super powerful as like Mother Mother Townsend. If they had all been that way, he would mm. never would have stood a chance, right? Because she she rivaled. Okay, it she didn't rival Palpatine. But remember, he saw her as a threat. She was powerful enough that he saw her as a threat. Yeah. So, dark side magic with a K is uh, pretty pretty ba. No need. Right. Didn't mean to rhyme that, but yeah. So, she arrives at the temple and says that this is what she says. Um, because Balin is like, this is not somewhere that the the Jedi built. Like, where did it come from? And she's like, well, people built from a different galaxy. So yep. she explains that and she does her magic thing to the map and she does her magic. Do the do the the little hand thingy. So that reminded me of when you said it. Yep. Um can we can we stop here and talk about how sick of an effect that green fire was? Oh yeah. I was just gonna get to the fight. That was the next thing I was gonna say was the fire thing. Okay. But. You already brought us there. I just, so. I just want to make note. Name. I, I could not. It was perfect. It wasn't too much. Okay, don't give me that. You, I don't know. It's just a flame. Like, no, 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 no. But you know, I, I watch Corridor. I'm in a VFX yeah. and stuff. It, it, it was, it was perfect. It wasn't too big. It wasn't too small. The way that it, it, it was just. I don't know. Maybe I'm a, maybe I'm more of a nerd than everyone else listening to this podcast. You know, but like, if, if I had to guess. It could have been practical. Yeah, you can burn certain chemicals. Uh, yeah, I mean, but I mean, it looked so, like, it looked really freaking good, and it was, it was, it was interesting because, like, all, obviously the the dark side magic stuff is all green. There's all green flames, green smoke, and stuff like that. And so it was, it was just like, if, to me, it was a perfect way. She says she's a night sister. Don't really see her do anything, right? Okay, she, you're a night sister, but can you do anything? And then the freaking green flames, and that's a perfect way to bring everything together. Like that's an immediate mental callback for me as a watcher, a viewer of the clone wars. Like the, it was just immediately night sister to me. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know. It was cool. And I don't know. It looked great. Yeah, so I'm yeah. going to say it wasn't too much. It was, it was exactly what it needed to be in the moment. Yeah. Okay. Freaking <laughs> whatever. Sorry. I got, <laughs> Yeah, it was, it was a pretty cool looking green flame. Yeah, it fit right right in the middle of the little hole in the yeah, yeah, thing. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so she does her magic thing, and the flame comes up, and <laughs> like we see the galaxy. Yeah, all comes out of the ball. Yeah, and then the I'll just say it because you want me to say it. The the navigation thing goes up around yeah, the temple. It's a map, big old map. And she starts moving the things, and the galaxy thing goes above one of the pillars with the little cutout on it. Yep. And then she tilts the thing, and then the line goes to it. And that's where we're going. That's where Thrawn is. The pathway to Peridia. And Balan's like, that's what younglings in the Jedi Temple would tell stories of fairy tales. And she's like, well, fairy tales are based off of a certain level of truth or whatever she says. Yeah. So, so th this thing is not like just a made up thing. This isn't a secret thing. Like this is something that the Jedi have known of, mm -hmm. but haven't really done anything with. Yeah. So, um, but then she has like this 
moment where she's hearing like she just like has a moment where she feels something hears something she says that thrawn is calling to her like what is that i think it was more of a figure of speech because i don't thrawn's not force sensitive right but something unless everyone by the end of the season everyone's force sensitive including chopper so you never know hey I'd rather them make Chopper force sensitive wow. than Sabine. Um, but like, but she had like a vision or she sensed something, like something happened. So like, what was that that caused her to think, she said something, oh, you can't change the threads of fate or the threads of fate don't lie or something like that. They, the, but like, you know, the old song, the threads of, the threads of fate don't lie. Yep. By Michael Blue Bay. <laughs> Um, but like, I don't know, like, is there some sort of mat, the the Dathomir, which is of Dathomir, like that magic was that from the other galaxy that was brought to this one? Like, and so like Thrawn is with other magic users and is able to use them to communicate. I don't know. I was just kind of confused. Like they're, they're doing a lot. They're doing a. I feel like these first two episodes were like just full of a lot of like metaphor and people using figures of speech. Cause if it was all literal, so much about the Star Wars galaxy would change. That's why I don't think Sabine was actually like a Padawan Padawan, but anyways, we already talked about that. So. Cause the view twist says, I think it's just her magic. Yeah. Not Thrawn being forced. Mm-hmm. So it's like, she yeah. feels like his desire to like return. Yeah, and she's got a. She and Thrawn have those, to an those yellow Nokia's that you could use as walkie talkies. Well, you know, like Thrawn thinks a lot in his mind <laughs> and stuff. That's usually where people think. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, sorry. The yeah. second that came out of Drew's <laughs> mouth, I literally went, "Jeremiah is gonna jump on this." <laughs> You know what I you mean. Didn't, you didn't disappoint, <laughs> Jeremiah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anyways, I wonder if he's thinking that she there's a possibility that she could be reaching out to him. And by her saying that, maybe she's able to read her mind. Like, read his mind or connect to him somehow. We learned that they work together. Like, they... Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, like, they have a connection... Are we to assume that Thrawn knows that she was a witch? Oh, yeah. he probably does. Like, like back 100%. during the Imperial My time, man like... figured out Vader was Anakin. I don't think. Yeah. Yeah, he's got to know. He knows. So that's probably what it is somehow. Some, yeah. The connection, they've already made that connection, blah, blah, yeah. blah. Yeah. Um, so then she mentions the Eye of Scion. And we learn later that it's basically a giant hyperspace ring. Do you know what Scion translates to? It's kind of car, right? Uh, I mean, yeah. But it's also spelled different. Yeah, so but it translates to air. In what language? I I don't I don't know, but I know it. Uh, it's this is from Merriam Webster. Um. Just, it's marrying. a descendant or child or heir. I think it's just a oh. noun. I think it's just a noun that also oh. that means okay. That kind of I thought you meant like oxygen. No, heir to the empire. Dude, Jeremiah, thought... come on. <laughs> no, no, I Jeremiah. I thought you the same the thing. Huh, heir making a ship that could fly in air. That's why I thought there's no yeah, air in I'll, space. It's a vacuum. That. That's fair. There's an air and space museum. All right, here we go. That was from The Simpsons. Homer made that joke. Wow. <laughs> anyway, my brother Andy's so, listening to this. He's probably laughing right now. So it uh, it translates to or is defined as air, like Your heir time. to the empire. Okay. Especially so, a descendant of a wealthy or aristocratic or influential family. But in this case, it's a nod to Thrawn being the heir of the Empire. It's also the name of a Sith Lord that I don't know as much about right. as I'd like to. But Which is he was, not... His body was be literally a falling apart. So, like, that can't be a coincidence that they would just no. take that... So I'm sure there's some something from the, the Darth Scion that's 
that inspired this uh, thing. Maybe. Yeah, I mean, probably. But I don't think they'll bring him into canon. Well, They better freaking maybe. bring Revan into canon before Scion. He, he is part of canon. There's a ship on Exegol called Revan. I want named after more than that. You, you do know that there was like a thing that like uh, Keanu Reeves is was cast in his yeah game, yeah Apple, yeah like. it's not it's not Revan it's but it would be like a flashback or like a, a Sith holocron going back to Darth Revan like it wouldn't be like I thought he was cast as a Jedi as a High Republic Jedi I don't think it was stated what he was oh well maybe I don't know I think he's that he's gonna be like in a Sith holocron he better he's gonna... he better freaking be Revan that's all I'm saying. Yeah, but if we get it, it's going to be like Maul in, in the Solo movie. Yeah, I'm, I'll be happy with that. I'll be happy oh, with that. That's, I want I I to see stuff. <laughs> well, you as of right now, we have, for season two. Uh, we have no Revan, basically, in canon. So I, any, I'll take anything I can get. Revan yep. Wick. <laughs> that, that, he, he's basically the, the John Wick of the Jedi. I'm just so, the Eye of Zion. Yep, big old we'll hyperdrive ring. We'll talk about that later at the final scene, but then she mentions Marak, which is this Inquisitor guy. Yep. It's very... It's, it's, it's very... No. It's very interesting because, like, I feel like the Inquisitors wouldn't have survived. Maybe they did. Maybe they did. But it's interesting that he goes by Marak. 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 Rather than, well, I mean, I guess he would have given up his something brother title. He's not a Empire. brother anymore. Yeah, he's that's probably true. just like a hired gun. That's or true. Hired blade. Yeah. But the thing is, though, I, I'm still curious why they have a mask on his face, though. That's so why I think it's Ezra. So, like, I, so one of two things is going to happen. One yes. of two things. One, they're not going to unmask him at all, and he's just going to be there. Okay. Two. There's going to be a reveal of someone that we already know. Maybe, I guess there's a third. Op- there's a third, and it's just someone random. He just takes off his helmet. And is like, oh, this yeah, it's like freaking. Dude, what if it's someone? It's Tim like... Allen. I don't know. No. Okay. Stop. Ar, ar, ar. <laughs> Dude, what? That's if why it's you mentioned Kanan? it? I've been watching Home Improvement again. Good show. Yeah. What if it's Kanan? Why would it be Kanan? How? How would it be cloned? I don't know. No, it's they're, not gonna, they're not going to go that way. <laughs> that would be the stupidest thing. Yeah, if he, <laughs> if, if, if he was like, quit. if, 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 so if, if he takes it. off his helmet and it's freaking Freddie Prince Jr. with a ponytail, I'm going to be like, I'm out. I'm out at this point. Everybody's cloning everyone. Palpatine's got a so clone. Bad. That would be the terrible. Yeah. It would, it would literally, yeah, I don't. And <laughs> Dave's not stupid enough to do that. And if he does Devue, do it, I'm sorry, Dave. I didn't mean to call you stupid, but I know you're not. So, right. the view twist. Uh, the reason why it's not the eighth brother from season two of Rebels is because that was an alien. Yeah, he has some by funky its feet. Funky feet, but this one was just a regular humanoid foot, apparently. Regular old guy. But we did think that in the trailer originally. Yeah, we did. Like that we The mask is bugged. very similar. Yeah. I think um, it, it's probably Ezra, dude. Saw, I, I'd be cool. Saw, dude. It's Ezra, but dude. I, but I don't think it makes sense if Thrawn is stuck. Yeah. Well, I, they, they said that he was banished. He was exiled. They, they used the word exiled. But, it, but they said banished, too. And see, I'm like... So it's like, what is... They're, they're using so much... They're, they're, they're using these terms... That like the phrase Thrawn calls to me, exile, banish, paddle on, all of these things, and I'm like, I have no, I, I literally, there were so many times during these two episodes that I was like, I have no idea where they're going with any of this, like, I, because of the words, because of what the words evoke, there's so many possibilities, because like all we know is Ezra did the thing, and then they f- flew off. That's not a banish, but I mean, it, I guess if if you're an imperial sympathizer, it could be perceived that way, but it's like, unless unless. The act of what Ezra did was he's banishing him maybe away from the galaxy because of how evil he is. Maybe. But it's so funny because Thrawn isn't evil. Less debatable. 
That's for another. From a debate. certain point, that's of a know. that's a cantina discussion later. We had that. Yeah, it's called our our trilogy that we just talked about. That's true. That's true. Go go check that out. But you know what yes. else you should check out? Wesley Andrews Coffee hey, and Tea. Br- 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 that is right. By the way, I have a personal testimony. If you've been on the fence about trying Wesley Andrews Coffee, I received a gift in the form of coffee from Drew. And I can attest that Wes Andrews is phenomenal. And I'm a coffee, you I'm a coffee have, snob. And of all you listening, if you right. came to Empire Con that first night, you could have got free bags of coffee. But You gave away free bags of coffee? And coffee. Yeah. Dang. Yep. Wow. That's a treat right there. Wes Andrews is great. S tier. So certain parents of certain listeners got coffee to bring home yo that's a treat right so if there. if you're listening i want to know what your parents think about it now yeah yeah so that being said let's take a listen to our ad for tonight from wesley andrews coffee and tea out of minneapolis minnesota hey everyone andrew here i'm pleased to tell you that the sponsor of today's episode is wesley andrews coffee and tea if you don't know anything about wesley andrews you definitely should They're an award-winning coffee roaster and shop in Minneapolis, Minnesota, and they make fantastic coffee. The awesome thing is that whether you live in the Twin Cities or not, you can get their coffee beans delivered straight to your door by ordering them online. They even have a subscription service that ensures you never run out of amazing coffee. If you've been looking for some new coffee to try or a way to elevate your normal coffee routine, now's your chance. Head over to wesleyandrews.cc, use the code EMPIRERADIO, that's with a capital E and a capital R with no space at checkout to get 15% off your first purchase of any bags of coffee or a coffee subscription. I can't think of a better deal. Get 15% off some great coffee, support a small business, and support your favorite Star Wars podcast. In the words of Emperor Palpatine, do it. Do, do it. it. Cool, cool. So, at the end of the scene at the temple, uh, Shin asks uh, Balin, so what happens when we find Thrawn? And he says three things. Some people will find war. Some people will find a new beginning. And she's like, well, then what do we want? Or what are we going to get? And he's like, power, like, they more than you could possibly imagine or something like that. So what does that mean? That's a bold... I mean, Thrawn's... Thrawn's Thrawn. But well, that's like, what is bold it? for a force it, user to say that. But is the... Is it the fleet or something that he's going to bring back with him? Maybe. Is it... Like, what is... I don't know. Let's figure out what that means. Is it just simply the the return of the Empire is, like, Unlimited the power? Unlimited power. But... Who knows? So that's the end of that season or scene. Wow. So <laughs> that's the whole Dang. show. Guys. That's the whole All show. Right. Then we go back to or go to Corellia, which looks nice too, nice and clean. Because in the solo movie, Quispy. it was a little uh, slummy, if you ask me. But yeah. you lived in a bad neighborhood, dude. I think that's all of Corellia. No. I think, yeah, obviously you had the rich people or whatever, you but... You can't judge a Corellia by a solo. A Corellian? No, a Corellia. Yeah. What's a Corellia? In Corellia. That's what you call yourself. No, you're a Corellian. No, 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 you can't... You can't judge Corellia by the movie Solo, but I don't want to say it like that. Oh. Why don't I you just say it the way oh English works? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Um, if you're listening for the first time, welcome. That's all so, I'm, I'm sorry. Ahsoka flies in, and she swoops down to land, and who's there? Or what's there, I should say? Bar, 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 bar. The Phantom. Oh, yeah. Oh, we haven't gotten the yeah. chopper yet. Like, oh, cool, we got the Phantom. Because I guess you didn't need the ghost? Like, no. No. I don't know. You'd think that if she's... She's this high-ranking general, and she's not going to take a better ship than. She well, didn't get there just she like, didn't expect there to be combat a battle. Well, yeah, yeah, but it's like you're not gonna if you're 
the president of the United States, you're not going to sleeping on. You're not going to jump in a 2004 Toyota Corolla to like go to like your big <laughs> meeting. If, if it like, runs good, bro. Sometimes if you're, the, if you're the president, it would at least no. be a 2012. <clears throat> Come on, possibly. But yes, so they meet up with the head guy there, Min Weaver, but. I think his last name should have been Weasel. <laughs> hey, uh, there it been is. Too much on the nose. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's, not, it's not like he had like a weird alien nose, and that like made sense. Like I, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I know. Gosh. But <laughs> yes. So what they're doing here at the shipyards is they're dismantling. They're doing shipyard stuff. Shipyard stuff. They're. Uh, breaking down hyperdrive things from Star Destroyers and taking the cores breaking out. breaking it down. There's like a group of guys with some cardboard and a boot, uh, boom box. They're break dancing. Okay. Yep. Andrew. And so they take the cores out and they use those to put in New Republic ships that they're <clears throat> building. And then he said something later on about how taking apart one Star Destroyer like was enough to fund like countless yeah projects and yeah whatnot so it's a very profitable endeavor and so they inquire about morgan elsbeth who used to work here like oh yeah all of her all that stuff has been taken care of dismantled the workers have been taken care of blah 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 and era and the so girl well can we still like take a look a closer look they like, nah no, you can't. And Hera's like, well, you want to make this more of an official inspection? He's like, nope, we're good. I'll, what do you want to see? This was very Hera. Like, this whole yeah, scene, right. even when they're up in the observation thing, I was like, mm -hmm. yeah, she's she's killing the acting right now. Yeah, so... Uh, as they're going through one of, like, the shipyard or whatever to wherever they're going, uh, they're just having... Various conversation about this is what we talked about earlier, where it's like, oh, these people are, have are still ex imperial people, like they worked for the empire back then. But in order for production to continue and all this stuff, like you gotta hire the same people, you can't just rehire everyone new. Um, and like these people don't care about galactic politics, they're just here for a job, allegedly. And so they have that conversation, but then uh, Hera ask Ahsoka about taking Sabine back and Ahsoka is just like no like she's not ready or something like that and then I was thinking like, well is anyone ever ready to like become a Jedi like it's not a thing like, you are you just... if you're taken from birth right that's why you're taken from birth yeah for those reasons yeah so then Hera's like well, when is someone, how do you know if someone's ready? And she's like, you just know, and they know also. They put it in their Facebook status with a smiley yep. face. I'm ready movie. to face the trials. Yeah. Yep. And so, is very Hera still being yeah. mother? I'm telling like, you, her character is extremely accurate. Like, they killed, they killed that with her. Her and Chopper, that, we'll get there. But yeah, chef's kiss, baby. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> um, and so then, then it flashes to Sabine, and what seemingly seems less than 24 hours, she's been completely healed from being <laughs> stabbed. With we don't officially have like a timeline, what how much time yeah, passed, yeah, but it yeah, seemed yeah. like it was presented as just a day. Okay, but here's the thing: if you, we go back to Interstellar. Time passes yeah. differently on different planets. That is true. So we, you could imply, I mean, should we have to imply that? No. But can you? Yeah. I, so what I, you're saying is it's just stupid writing. Okay. So well, moving on. My thing, my thing is like <laughs> I didn't have as much problem with the healing because it, you clearly had the, like the Bacta lines. Bacta is a freaking yeah. miracle drug, man. You can use it for everything. But I mean, if you think about how fast Luke was literally almost dead. Yeah, my and the thing that I had a problem like, with right away was the first scene when she's in the bed and Ahsoka's there. She's like, Whoa! 
And she gets up, and I'm like, dude, it would hurt so That's bad. That's what Stephanie said. So bad. Okay, Steph but said the same this is, thing. It's, it's space medical technology. They don't. They don't but they I, but that was right after. I'm not talking yeah, about but, when she's healed. I'm talking about the no, very I, first I, thing. I know. I know, but they just. They got better painkillers than we do. And they're probably oh, less, yeah. less and that's, that's why for me it's not really surprising that she's already healed. Okay. I mean, you see how fast they put on Luke's new hand? Like, that was right away. He had a new hand, like, right away. Uh, I think yeah. there was more time that passed, but... Nah, that was... No, it was... Next day, dude. Yeah. So he got that Amazon Prime hand. Yeah, uh -huh. dude. Next day delivery, baby. So, yep. I don't know. For me, it doesn't... It didn't, like surprise me at all okay so where am i man? i lost my place in my notes oh yeah so hu yang is like trying to give her a pep talk because he's like oh you got this oh yeah. he's like no pep that's talk. that's uh ezra said like, he's like no you made some modification and it's now it's yours because this isn't what ezra created I'm like i guess that's not an wrong. accurate uh, 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 assessment Ahsoka? No. Assessment. Um, so it, it It's interesting. So, speaking of... Parking on the lightsaber for a second. So, in the Star Wars canon comics... Now, I get it. I get it. The, the TV shows have precedence. But we're talking... I'm talking canon here. I'm not going to the EU. Don't worry. In the canon comics recently, they've been doing a lot of exposition on kyber crystals and how kyber crystals work. Um... Yeah, to view twist. That's exactly where I'm going with this. So they've been doing a lot of exposition on how the kyber crystal uh, bonds with the, the, the lightsaber owner and how you can use someone else's lightsaber, but it will never be as fully effective as if it was your own kyber crystal. What does that mean? So when when you get so remember when the when the the uh, Padawans do the thing on Ilum, all of the yep. crystals are like just clear, and then they get them and they turn they change colors. They they mm -hmm. right. so that is the beginning of a bond in the Force between that specific crystal and the owner, and it they right. they they grow together because the the, the crystals have a certain level of sentience in the force because of the force and the bond between the lightsaber, the kyber crystal and the Jedi grows as the Jedi grows in the force. There's a very specific bond there, which is why the dark side crystals are so they embody the dark side of the force so much, because now we know that these crystals have to be bled. So they take a crystal that was someone else's crystal and they force it with just an insane amount of dark side energy so much that it corrupts it and turns it red and forcefully makes it theirs. Right. Yeah. But even then, they have this newly created bond with the crystal. And so they've been doing a lot of exposition because in, in, in the canon comics, Luke has a yellow lightsaber for a little bit. He like finds a random lightsaber because obviously he loses the blue one with his hand. And so he he has this yellow lightsaber and he uses it for a while and then it doesn't quite work super super well and then he has this conversation with this kyber crystal crystal expert I'm paraphr paraphrasing and summarizing hugely here but essentially they have this conversation where he's like how did it feel when you use these other the, the yellow lightsaber he's like it never really felt like my own it, it you know it was effective but I I it never truly felt uh like I could, you know, release my full potential. And then he even, I think he makes a comment about the blue one, even Anakin's lightsaber, how it never truly felt his. Like there was something about it that was just like not completely connected. And then they they talk about the kyber crystals. And he talks about how this expert talks, gives him a a, a fresh crystal, which then becomes his green crystal. And you have to bond with it through the force. All of that to say, it's very interesting when these things happen in canon. For example, Sabine getting Ezra's lightsaber. Now, is Sabine force sensitive to what degree? We don't know. We don't really know. But like, it, any anytime someone else 
now after reading what I've read in the in the articles about the comic issues and stuff like that, it, it's always very interesting to me to see when someone else takes a lightsaber of another person now. Because there's always that like, will it ever really truly work for this person? We don't even know, we don't yet know if kyber crystals can change bonds. You know, you you do have in the the sequels where Maz Kanata says that the lightsaber called to Rey. There's some conflicting information there, but like mm -hmm. all I'm saying is the lore surrounding kyber crystals is like slowly being expanded. And so like Hu Yang calls it hers, but is it really? You know what I'm saying? Is it truly hers? Well, I don't think it's truly hers because I think once we see Ezra, if he's not the Inquisitor, I think he's gonna she's gonna give that saber back to him. Maybe. It's kind of like he, the he it's kind of like the Elder Wand, a little bit. Mm. A little, it's it, kind of where you have to so, you have to take it in battle, but it's not truly the person. So until. I I get the whole connection thing, but like, what does it practically like result in, like? Because, like, in, when Sabine is training with the Darksaber with Kanan, yeah. once she has that, like, emotional healing or release or whatever in the moment, she's like, it's starting to feel lighter. Like, so is it... Yeah. yeah. Is, that, is that what it is? It's like, it's your... Uh, no, no. So... So it's like, if you're not using someone else's thing, it's like you have, like, extra weight on your hand. No, it's so just... So it's like, it's harder to use? Like, what no, does it mean? it's just like... It, the dark saber is a little different. It doesn't. It, it's not that it inhibits something. It's that when you have the bond, it's not subtractive. If that makes sense. So if 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 I had a lightsaber, I was a Jedi. We were all Jedi. Drew picks it up. He'd be able to use it. He'd be effective with Heck it. Yeah. Like he'd be able to to fight people. But if I used it, knowing it's my crystal, I would be able to bond with it and use it to its fullest potential. There's this like in the comics like. There's this moment where Luke's like, no, I get it. Like, it makes sense. Like, I'm able to use it more. Like, it's it feels more like an extension Good. of himself. And, like, he he bonds you with it. You it and it comes back. Uh, yeah. I mean, you can kind of do that. But but what I'm saying is, like, there there is more strength that a Force user will have with a fully bonded kyber crystal than one that's not. Like, would Yoda be incredibly powerful if he just picked up Anakin's lightsaber? Sure. It would be also be comical because it's so long. But like, there's something to be said about a Jedi wielding their own lightsaber and the potential that they can accomplish with that, if that makes sense. It's like Daddy Palp said in this chat. It's like a dog. It's only really <laughs> yours when the dog is with you long enough. Yeah. I mean, that is the view. Yeah. Yeah. It's like an owner. Yeah, Devitua like, says it I, means practically that Sabine can't use it as skillfully. Yeah, I mean she she can use it. Don't get me wrong; like she can she can be great with it, but she's not going to be as good as she could be if she was force sensitive and she bonded with the, the the crystal. Okay, which is interesting because I feel like Hu Yang would have known that. Well, it's not that he said it He's, was. He just knows about building the, the practical aspect of Jeremiah, what a saber is. Did I bore you? It was a longer answer than I was expecting because I was just want to know like the practical aspect. Oh, not, well, because I already knew most of that other stuff. I think. Yeah, I mean, it's it's been a pretty recent addition to Which, the what? comic canon. That's the whole thing with the soka, the colors, and how you lean closer to certain things and how we know that these people aren't Sith Lords because their sabers aren't completely red. They're orange. -ish. Yeah. Yeah. The one, okay. So the, the Dooku Yaddle episode of Sales of Jedi, one of the best things in all Star Wars, perfect, like perfect in every way. But the one thing that I wish they could done, which it doesn't fully wouldn't work with the whole bleeding. Crit, but like I wanted like, as he was standing over her, for his blade to go from blue and turn red, but I know that it takes a lot uh, more. Oh yeah, more... It, yeah. It's it's a very intense process. So like, I, I thought that would have been cool if like it's in that moment you saw it go from blue and it. Do you want to hear about what that process is like? No, not right now. It's so interesting. You're already an hour Cause, and a half cause in because you, you see it from Vader's perspective in the comic. 
It's well, it's really fascinating. Well, I already. All right, all right, fine. Way behind on schedule. All right, fine. So, Hu Yang says his stuff, and she's like, "I forgot how annoying you are." He's like, "It's being logical." <laughs> so apparently, being logical is annoying, which I I felt that one. Yeah, I kind of find his character a little annoying, personally. But that's just me. <clears throat> so, <laughs> then uh, he says something along the lines of, your aptitude for the Force is lower than any other Padawan in the past hundreds of years that I've <laughs> helped with Padawans. It was like a big slap in the face. Well, I, told, I, I was happy to hear that. Like, I'm... I want it to be like her force force sensitivity is literally like fifty midichlorians, and she just has enough to do some force dreams and maybe give her a little extra focus. But she can't like it hasn't force push. awakened in her yet. Okay. Yep. So I like that. So that's what I'm hoping. It's just such so a small amount of force sensitivity that. It can help her in fighting, and that's why she's so great, but it's, she'll never be able to do a force push or really do anything past that. So I, yeah. I'm ha- I'm hoping that's what he meant by that. Like, she is actually force sensitive. It's just that it's so little, like, it doesn't matter type of thing. So. Um, that's that. And so then we go back to Corellia. And Ahsoka and Sabine are and Hera. In the... Yes, Hera. Not yes. Sabine. Um, they're at in Corelli looking at the inventory, whatever that like office thing was that they were looking over the shipyard. Yep. And they're just talking, blah blah blah. And Hera's like, "What's that out there? That's a really big hyperdrive. What's what's uh what's the deal with that?" He's like, uh, da, 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 da. I'll take a look. I don't know. Uh, uh, like, it's from a super star destroyer. And Hera's like, well, that's. Yeah. I love how we're he not... said, he didn't say super star destroyer. He specifically said SSD. SSD, which that was, that was the perfect way to do it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like it wouldn't have been in character for them in galaxy to be like, it's a super star destroyer. Like. No, because, like, in the Empire, they did ISD, SSD. Like, they used all the abbreviations. I love that. Just a little... A-T-A-T, not at-at. Yeah. At, at. And... Oh, no. <laughs> no, it's not. It's terrible. <laughs> um, but, yes, he's like, oh, let me go look it up for you. Let's see what's going on. And he's like, oh, I got it right here. It's classified. <laughs> convenient and Hera's like uh i'm a general nothing is classified for me like can you open it up like nope i don't have authorization well i'm giving you authorization can you open it yeah. nope can't do it here uh c1 whatever come on over he said explain? ct uh it was the same first two characters as the one in the trade federation ship in the phantom menace Wow. I think. Mm. Don't quote me on that, but I'm pretty sure when he said it, I was like, oh, it's the same. It's literally the same thing that the droid uh, calls itself in The Phantom Menace. It's like the, not obviously not the same whole name, but the characters were similar. Yeah. It wasn't like C3PO or, you know, C something, P something. It was like very specifically similar to that. So, yes, calls over this droid. <laughs> and how do I transition from that? I don't know. I don't know. Like, <laughs> um, like, do you know what's going on with this? Blah, blah, blah. And they were asking about HK droids, which are assassin droids, too. And like, guy's like, yeah, there's no HK droids here. And he's like, well, actually. Um, do you know what it stands for? High kill droid. Hunter killer. You know where you, go. you know where I don't know if they originated there, but you know where what made them really popular? Evil. Knights of the Old Republic, baby. 
because oh. one of the main characters is an HK droid. Very different style, but he called everybody meatbags. Yeah, he he's did. a he has a fun sense of humor. Yep, it's a large <laughs> universe out there. That's what I'm trying to. Anyways, uh, like yeah, I got the instructions from an HK droid five rotations ago, and I couldn't. Well, then author, I didn't give me permission to do any of that, whatever it was, and well, because he asked why didn't you report that, and he said, well, I he didn't give me authorization to right report it. So, and they're like, well, do you know where this droid is now? Like, actually, it's right. He's taking the hyperdrive and leaving right now, and they're like, can you stop the stop him from taking off? And the lady's like, sorry, it's right, it's already he's already going. We can't stop him. And during this whole scene, you're looking at these workers in here, and they're like paying attention, they're getting, they're looking back, they're getting, they're antsy. getting antsy. And then, just like uh, Saka in the Last Airbender, sneak attack and announces to everybody in the world that you're trying to kill these people, like for the empire. For the empire, okay, Ahsoka kills them. Like, <laughs> don't like announce you're trying to kill someone when you're trying to like sneak attack them. So it's like in uh, Hot Rod, Ultimate Punch. <laughs> yeah, it's the same. Basically, the same thing. So Ahsoka and Hera were an amazing duo in that moment. So dope. They only had like three or four guys there, but Samurai that was pretty cool. Them. That was pretty cool. Ahsoka force stops the one, and Hera just shoots him. Yeah, he's like a mm-hmm. sitting duck. Like, <laughs> so they did that. Hera runs back to the Phantom. Ahsoka slices through the window, jumps down to go in pursuit, and. Um, immediately after Ahsoka jumps down and starts running, she gets stop- she stops in her tracks, and there's the Inquisitor guy, uh, mm-hmm. Merrick. Morak, Merrick, whatever, and then the HK droid, or yeah, another not yeah. probably not the one flying the ship, but no, 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 another but HK did, droid. Yeah. And so there's that dual fight. But Hera jumps on the ship to go in pursuit of the leaving ship. Yeah, and I really like that scene when Hera sees the fight down below. Yeah, that was, that was and, fun. And it's just little tiny little blades. I thought that was just cool. Yeah, cool. Scene. So it you can tell that she's been in this type of situation before because you can see it on her face. Which she are you referring to? I'm sorry, Hera. Hera. Hera has been in these situations before, and she's matured through them. It also shows her her trust in Ahsoka because yeah, there's she wasn't there's, panicking to turn around. She well, there was a moment. Like, there's a brief around. moment when she was like. She acknowledges that she she can't help, and then she she like turns away and then flies off. And I'm like, she she thought about it for a second, like she mm-hmm. did. She thought about going to help. She and, and but then she realized that like there was it was it would be better for her to do what she's doing now, and that was more important. So it's cool, great acting. Yeah. So those two people they 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 separate to do their own part of the mission, basically, and so Hera's in pursuit. And Chopper's in there, and they quickly realize they're not going to be able to stop them because they're not listening to anything Hera's commanding them to do. So she's like, all right, we got to get a tracker on. So Chopper well, grabs I mean, a tracker. Even more obviously than not listening, they start shooting at them. Right. Yeah. yeah. And so uh, Chopper, he has his own little, his little cubby. junk drawer. Yes. <laughs> and so he's like dumb. going through things, throwing it out, and he's like, did you go through my things? Like yelling yeah. at Hera. I was like, no, I didn't go through your things. I thought that was just. It was funny. so good. It's just a junk drawer. It's kind of like um, a Wally. Yeah. Um, having his own stash. Yeah. And she's like, he's like, I can't find it basically. And she's like, did you look under the extra battery? And he's like, oh, here it is. You got me. Yeah. And it's so funny because some of his vocalizations sound very, very similar yeah. to to actual words. Yeah. Right in their vocal inflection, I thought it was uh, it, it was great, perfect, expertly done. The one thing that he grabs and throws out, someone brought it up that it looked like a one of those small Lego pieces, like this the single piece that you put on things. Maybe it was. Yeah. Well, it was too big, but people were saying like maybe that was like a a nod towards Lego a little bit. Maybe. I don't know. 
that whole scene though was hilarious yeah. chopper was so good yep and like you said andrew like you knew what he was saying the entire time yeah <laughs> but there was no like subtitles or anything it was just like we knew what was going on and yeah. it was so well done and it was so chopper yeah like out of all these characters we it's kind of hard for us to transition from animation to live action with chopper there was no issue at all for well me. he's one of the easiest to do well great plus they're, sure. they're both animation too so because <laughs> rebels is animation you, he's cgi so okay you know what i mean i don't i mean they're, they're, so, they they definitely had a practical one though so i'm but i'm i know that at the end of rebels like in the credits the final scene or whatever i think dave floney was the voice of chopper i wonder if he's also in the credits for chopper Try help us out maybe look that up um, but yeah, so they chase the ship out to space and then before it jumps to hyperspace, Chopper's able to like spin and like, a sick it's a good trick. It's a good trick. Spin Do you think that was intentional that they did like that? Maybe. He did a spin and like That was, was a, a really trick. cool maneuver though. Yeah. So like how else would he be able to throw it other than like using physics like that? The best so, trick. Yeah. Yeah. Spinning. Max curveball so, so it lands on the hyperdrive thing and it goes out so they able to track that uh ahsoka she's on the ground fighting and i really like the choreography of this fight i thought it was really cool i really like the scene. Is... i don't know i wonder if take good. off the cloak i feel like it's it makes it look like she's slow for me so on that note Ever since Revenge of the Sith, I've I've missed the fero the ferocity of the lightsaber right. fighting in the prequels. Because it was very fast. It was very fast and very ferocious. Like think about the mm -hmm. duel between Anakin and Obi-Wan. Like those are the, it, it, maybe it's because I grew up with those movies, but to me, I feel like lightsaber combat in live action hasn't quite been the same yeah. since then. You know what I'm saying? But, but I feel like in this ep or in these first two episodes, her lightsabers, like she's been I very like fast. It's slow, no. Like in that, that opening thing when she's at the temple when she's fighting those droids, like she's really quick yeah. and fast. Yeah, I mean, it's and great. Stuff. It just, it just feels this, different. It just feels different this, for me. But in this fight, it was there was also very fast too. Like I, I feel like it, for me, it felt slow, and I I think it's the cloak. Like it seems like it's kind of holding her back. I I don't agree with that. At all. I think it's I think it's the fastest stuff we've had since the prequels. Like like it's she, she's very fast. Like cause that's part of her character. She's very ed, has a lot of agility in her fighting and movements, and I think that they've portrayed that very well in these two fights I, I don't i don't know i don't really understand i didn't think it was that fast i like think about like it was good i'm not saying it was not good i liked it i thought the whole thing was so dope especially when he threw the saber at her and oh at the yeah end when he got on the thing and she like she just barely moves that was sick that was so dope was that was like the coolest thing ever i'm like dude fat with the pH. It was so sick. I love that part because she like barely moved, but she could feel like she knew, and it was just so flawless. And she was giving that death glare to him, like, "You think you're gonna kill me with something that dumb? Like, I got this." Like, it was so dope. Yeah. But I just think like she might look a little faster if that cloak's not on. See, even Daddy Pal said it felt slow. I agree. Like, and I think it's the cloak, honestly. I don't think it's them fighting. I just think the cloak kind of... It masks it, the movement a lot. Yeah, it kind of blows out a little bit, and it kind of feels like it's a little I don't more know. I'm just looking at the blades. I'm not looking at her fashion sense. Like, That's I, fair. That's I, fair. I don't know. If you just look at the blades, it's... Even Steph says, she's like, this feels slow. I'm like, yeah, I agree. I thought the same thing about Could be your nice Shin TV. Maybe and... our TVs aren't as good as yours, Jeremiah, and that's why. I yeah. felt the same thing about Shin. I felt the same way about Shin and Sabine's fight, though. 
But I think that was more so yeah. because Sabine was not nearly as trained and she hasn't been training. And then Shin was just toying with her. Because I feel like, yo, if she wanted to end that fast, she could have done that so much quicker. I feel like Shin was is a much better duelist. Right. I also had my comment that I think... You said that too, Jeremiah, in the last episode. Shin was not... She was just kind of toying with Sabine. Like yeah. She wasn't going all out. Um, but yes, I really liked when... She kills the the droid, and yeah, then that was sick. They're, they're fighting with, yeah, that was cool. It. Very and smart, both, very Ahsoka too. They both destroy, yeah, the droid in the multiple parts like together, which is kind of cool. Um, but he once the ship hits hyperspace and leaves the Harris chasing, he gets a signal on his. I don't Apple know watch magic watch. Like I don't know what you want to. Google Maps. K Seth Watch. K Watch. Um, because it's magic with a K. K Watch. <laughs> um, he's like, all right. Deuces. Like he's out. He's he as the his, kids say. Deuces. <laughs> uh, he enacts his other blade. Says, put it on spinny automatic mode, and then launches it into the distance. Yai. Which I didn't really get why he did that. Like you can run away. You can't just turn your saber off and run. Well, it, it was supposed to oh, be it's, it's too her. heavy. Yeah, it's gonna slow no, me down. No, but like, he threw well, it, it so to, to, to give her all her. Yeah, it was a few extra seconds that he had to get away because she had to worry about dodging, and then of course her mind would have been on, "Is it coming back?" Yeah, you know what I'm saying. I don't know based on how she. Uh, I mean that that made sense to me. It made sense to me too. I don't know. I. Didn't really, it was wasn't so that he could run faster without the lights. I don't know why. Running. I'm like, just turn it off it was, and run back. Like, it was so to stall her like a second longer, because he threw it at her and she had to move out of the way, and then he was already running. Yeah. Okay. And the people. So, pew, pew, pew. Balin's ship comes. He starts shooting. And well, it's not Balin though. Yeah. It, it, She's not in. He's not in that ship. Yeah, I think it's, it's just a ship. It, yeah, but it's Shin's driving it. Yeah, Shin, it's Shin because he he told Balin told her to go help the to help Merrick. Yeah. yeah, and he he stays on the planet. But yeah, but wasn't Shin on the the ramp though? Yeah, I think they have what? a droid with him. Or is that a they probably have another droid? Yeah, Balin didn't go with. Yeah, Balin, he said, Balin "I need there. you to go." Go help okay. the Inquisitor well, or whatever his name is. Either way, it's his ship. Their ship. Yeah. Oh, yeah. it's yeah. Well, that's the whole point is jumps on the ship to escape. They leave. He calls back the saber, which was it just just flying the whole time? Like the 30 seconds? Like it's Some just, dude on his lunch break way off in, at work. Gets eaten. Gosh. <laughs> um... So he calls it back, and she just kind of barely. That was so moves. sick. It was so dope. Kind of like Anakin in season seven of Clone Wars when he's on that bridge, and Obi Wan's like down below, like hiding, and he's just standing there getting shot at, and he's just going like this, talking. Remember that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I remember any of that. So Master Apprentice. Um. So yeah, then Harris is like, hey. I got a tracker on it. Perfect. Um, so then we jump back to Sabine. It's just her getting her Mandalorian armor and laying it out and looking through it. And then she cuts her hair. Like, Keenan. never pass her perfect bride. I don't know what that means. So. I like that scene of her just kind of reflecting and doing what she has to do to prepare herself to the next step. And so I thought that was a really cool scene. And then um, just a flash back to Karelia, that Min guy and other people are just being arrested. The Arabesh um, on the side of that reads police, by the way. On the side of the New Republic ship, there's some Arabesh. It just reads police. It's just a fun little detail. Oh, by the way, 
the arabesh on Sabine's helmet when she's on the speeder bike reads babe. Dude, speaking of, we you didn't talk about the music in that. So. Oh, yeah, that music was sick. Okay, good. It was so long. Let there be guitar. But anyways. It was so dope. Yep. <laughs> and so... Yeah. Then Sabine... Ahsoka goes back on her ship, and there's a the phone's ringing. The phone. And the phone is ringing. It's Sabine. And Sabine's hologram just pops up in the middle. Like, that All right, I'm ready. Let's do this. Backyardigans. Or no, um, wait. Wonder Pits? What was that show? Huh? It wasn't the, it wasn't the I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm talking about kids' shows. Go ahead. Uh, so then we go to back to Sitos, where the temple was, but that's where the... Uh, Eye of Scion is being constructed, and it's this giant hyperspace ring, what it looks like. Big boy. And we are explained that the Eye is to bring Thrawn back. And so what exactly that means, like, is it just to, like, is it that big because it has to be that big to travel to the other galaxy? Or is it also that big because it's going to be bringing large things back like with the it. chimera that Ooh, is what I uh think about that. that is what uh the view twist i think said earlier yeah when chat. i when i saw that ring i was like my immediate thought was like they're freaking they're bringing the star destroyer back because in it's star wars huge. hyperdrives never work so <laughs> yeah like they have to do that so do you think it's just for, large just for the one ship or do you think there's, it's going to be bringing like multiple ships or anything else. So there are three possibilities here. One, they literally just fly that, okay. which is a very interesting ship design. But then it you 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 ask the question, okay, well, what's the most optimal way to put nine hyperdrives on something? Well, maybe this is the best design. I don't know. The second option is they're bringing back a single ship. Think about how big a Star Destroyer is. I, I think that it's sized in a way that can bring a single Star Destroyer back. Like, I don't think it's so big that it could bring more than a Star Destroyer. Yeah. But the third possibility, as you were mentioning, is that there are multiple ships that they can... But, like, it's it's like, well, then how do you... Do they just, like, line up around the ring and... I don't know. Lincoln. I, I, well, I think it's a Star Destroyer, If you destroyer, think about though. the other rings that... So if you think about like what episode three, Obi Wan Kenobi's ship, he had to go through a hyperdrive ring, yeah, to hit hyperdrive. I feel like you're you're right in the sense like it seems like a giant version of that that is going to be able to go around Thrawn's ship and bring him back. Yeah, I mean the thing about it is we're not talking about normal hyperspace travel because an SSD or an ISD has a great like a super fast hyperdrive but they need they need something more they need nine of them <laughs> they need nine they need eight more hyperdrives so but the question is um some it might have been daddy pelps in the discord might have said something like that this other galaxy reminded him of the yuzong vong but like, are we like? But or is this the Yuzong Vong actually going to be what we know as the Grisk now? Like, is is the Grisk from this other galaxy, and that's where they came? Like, so we're all on board that the Grisk are going to be a part of moving forward. Like, but it just seems like it's changed. So like, how does the Grisk fit into the story now? So okay, so. We never truly figure. We, we're never truly given the origins of the Grisk in the Ascendancy trilogy. Right. We we know that they're there, and we know that they have they've been there long enough to establish a a presence with other aliens in the area. Like the Agbui. You know, it's not like 
they're completely new to the galaxy, the Grisk. So right. th- there's there's an indication that they've been there some time. However, we don't know where they came from when they arrived. It would make sense because of the way the line is pointing. It, it feels like the line is pointing from the unknown regions or somewhere close to the other galaxy. It doesn't feel like it's pointing from like one of the core worlds or something like that. Okay. So it, it I mean, I could be wrong. I'm speculating at this point, but it could be that the Gris came in and they encountered the unknown regions first, which would. Th- there are a lot of parallels between the Grisk and, and the Yuzan Vong um, because they both came from... The, ass- assuming that the Grisk come from outside of the galaxy, they both would have come from outside the galaxy. They both kind of slowly made their way in, used espionage and stuff like that, and, and did a lot of like reconnaissance and stuff first. They didn't just barge in. And of course, the Grisk has, have proven themselves to be a, an extreme threat, at least to the Ascendancy, because of how cunning they are. Same thing with the Yuzan Vong, but with their military power. Um, so I feel like Yuzan Vong wouldn't make sense to bring them in at this point. Unless it's going to be this self-contained story that is going to end with their destruction in the movie, which would be very hard to believe because they were extremely difficult to kill in Legends. They, they, were, they were like literally arguably the biggest threat to ever hit the galaxy um so if i feel like wanna, if you're listening and you want to know about the yuzong vong we have an eu with andrew going in depth about the yuzong vong yeah, yeah, yeah. so go check that out so um i feel like the grisk would make more sense to be the name of the force because it would also because like there's there's so much setup there there's so much setup in the thrawn novels like there's too much there literally are right. six books, right? The equivalents of six books setting these 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 creatures up. I feel like they're they're not going to waste that. You know what I'm saying? Right. So I hope it's the Grisk, and I hope that the the movie ends with them actually teaming up with Thrawn. Right. So. So are we to assume that the line from our galaxy to the other galaxy? That Cetos is this, that planet that where it starts off, because that's where the map is, and I don't know, to, and that's where the ring is. I also thought it was interesting going back to the map. Did you see the the circle of Pergil around the the map? Uh, when the I galaxy and credits, like where they yeah. Going so through, when the it, galaxy but... centers over that little stone thing. There's a circle of Pergo moving around in a very similar way to the wolves, the Loth wolves in the world between worlds, which further implies the Pergo as being a part of the the route. So, but it would make sense because Pergo are there in the sky, in the yeah. atmosphere, and we see in the trailer that they're they Ahsoka and Sabine fly around one at one point. So it, it's possible that that's the place. Very possible. Interesting. I'm just saying we're already only two episodes into this show, and it's already completely different than anything we could ever like. Yeah. yeah. Guess like we're like we spent like what five hours over two trailers, and we're yeah. already like 99 percent wrong. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but. Yes. So, but the final scene kind of is where they're in the ship. In the yes. Uh, so, Daddy Palps brings up a really good point about this episode. I don't understand why an ancient artifact could point towards the exact location of Thrawn and why they knew about this map and how it could point to him. So, I so when when she found that, I had this a similar. I was like, dude, seriously, this is the dagger, yeah. the Sith dagger, all over again. Yeah. However, as the episode progressed. I realize that if this map is it signifies this Pergil migration or, or traveling right. route, what happened with Thrawn, it, the map isn't to Thrawn's location because Thrawn went there first and then they made the map. No. The, the map pre-existed right. Thrawn and the Pergil took him through that path. Right. Which mm-hmm. is how Morgan, Morgan Elsbeth's uh, ancestors knew about it. 
So right. he brings it, Daddy Pals brings up a fantastic point because I think a lot of people might miss that. Because like, it, like 100%, I was like, dude, how do they know where Thrawn is? I had the exact same thought. And then, no, we, we talked about that in the last episode. Yeah. Like, and then, didn't make I, any sense. And then I was like, oh, okay. So it's not that Thrawn went and they made the map like the freaking Death Star 2 and that da- dumb dagger. The, the path was already okay, laid but out. But that dagger was made after the crash. Ochi made that dagger. Like, it's not the same How thing. How do we know that? Because they didn't explain that in the, mo- in the movie. I think that's in a visual guide See? Book. I don't know. See? <laughs> Freaking, why leave that out of the movie? Because it's... Anyways. But... <laughs> so, for those people wondering, I, I wasn't a part of the episode that you guys did on episode one, so if you went into that, I apologize for rehashing it. But I, I'm saying that because I... Was no, like, oh, I this mean, is we super were just dumb. confused on and that. Then it yeah, we were t- I think we were talking. We said kind of a similar thing, like talking about how the Pergil were this thing. So yeah, yeah. Anyways, if, and the Uber of the she's, galaxy. She's she's also just assuming that's where the Pergil went because they don't they can hyperspace travel and yeah, not go there. So yeah, but I mean, she's having would, a- animals rely on instinct though, so y- you would. You would think if if a Jedi is like, "Hey guys, we got to go into the hyperspace right now," they w- they would fall back on something that they are familiar with, you know. But yeah. you're, that's also a good point. They might get to that galaxy on this path and be like, "Yo, where's Thrawn at? <laughs> we are not in the same place." They show up on the other side, and like the whole entire galaxy is just destroyed. Like, yeah, what freaking happened? Thrawn dropped a pin in the wrong place. Let me tell you. There's like a big banner floating there. It says Darth Jar Jar was here. Oh, God. Like, <laughs> um, but anyway, to end the scene, uh, Morgan Elsbeth asks Balin, like, what his, like, what he's feeling. Oh, yeah. Because they're whatever. on the bridge of the ship yeah. now. And then the, the, hol- the hologram is very it's different. A, it's a different thing. It's like, like dust, particles, like dust and, yeah. Which is it's, it's a cool way because, yeah. like, even watching Hera's thing, it's always flickering. I'm like, dude, like, you can't make a better connection with like holograms. It's all every, it's always flickering in every Star Wars movie. But like, this stuff was. I mean, think about more. how far the transmission is having to pass, though. And there's no yeah. latency, none. That's impressive. Mm-hmm. I'd take 720p. I don't know. They can't just make some no latency. Yeah, but they should be able to have some. AI app or whatever that can like smooth out the, the hey, yeah, just like, chat, chat GPT on this man yeah like what the heck dude but she asks anyway Morgan asks Balin like something about like what his perception or feelings are or whatever he's feeling in the moment and he says something about like he doesn't want to kill Ahsoka like she he doesn't want her to die because she's the last well because he, he says Jedi. she's coming right and he's but he's like I well, don't want she her to says die. I need, you need to you need to kill her, and he's like, "It would be and, a shame to kill her." Yeah. And Morgan is like sentimental. He's like, "No, it's just the truth." Yeah, but I totally think that Balin's going to turn. Hmm. And this, I, hmm. he's because he's like that comment. Like, mm-hmm. that's not just him just making a rant. Like, some, that was something deep in like where he has like he remembers his past, where he came from, and like it, what he was a Jedi. And now that he's encountering another Jedi, like, or a former Jedi, like he's kind of like thinking, maybe I shouldn't be trying to end the last one of the few remaining. The last Jedi. <laughs> the last Jedi. So, yeah. So Sick. this show is already crazy. We have no idea what's going on. Nope. <laughs> More questions and answers. For um, but like I said, I think at the early, at the beginning of the episode, like when that hologram started to turn on right to end there, I thought that was Thrawn popping in. Yeah. I was like, we're finally, finally getting it. And then no. I also find get- it very interesting that somehow Morgan Elsbeth has a former inquisitor and then two dark oh, Jedi. Th- See, that's, that's okay. So that's my thing is, I'm just very interested in think... learning how that Wait, happened. Well, first of all, with the Dark Jedi stuff, or with them, he said, in the first episode, she said, 
oh, you actually came. And then he mentioned money. Well, and I don't know exactly what he said, but pretty much he said money pays. Like, he'll do what he needs to do for money. So he's a hired gun. Mm. And and his mind is, like, more powerful. Like, it could just be, like, Thrawn. And because they find this person, there's a war, and they're going to get funds from this. Like, they're going to get paid out or whatever. Mm. And then another thing is we saw the Inquisitor walk up to Morgan with Balin, not with her. So I think the Inquisitor is actually with Balin. Oh, interesting. And not... I see. Not with her. So it I seems see. like a, a third hired gun, but it's more like he's working with those two. Do you think, and like, Balin, post and the... And Morgan's getting... Do you think, like, after the purge and after the fall of the Empire, they met up somewhere and they were like, yeah. hey, we should, we're better together than trying to kill each other? Which is another reason why I think by him, like, not wanting to kill Ahsoka, like, he... he st- it almost seems like he's trying to maybe bring the Jedi Order back. It's interesting because, like, where where was he during the original trilogy? Well, where was Ahsoka during the original trilogy? Well, if you want to... That's fair. Talk. That's fair. <laughs> like, come on. So, we, can, we can't really think about that. Yeah. But but that it it really does seem like he is almost like has a third plan going on and maybe he's trying to work Mm. with these jedis and like he's trying to benefit off of these wars that in his mind maybe he we should the jedi shouldn't be a part of at all because he said for some people it means war for some people it means this for us it means power well he's already mentioned that money is the reason why he's doing this. So is it just money is power to him? No, I I wouldn't say he's that shallow because he's a force user. He understands that the force is far more powerful than money. I think what he implies is that there are going to be resources and military strength that they won't have access to it otherwise. Mm. So yeah. Thrawn, Thrawn has the ability to bring the Empire back together. He does. Mm-hmm. So... But Daddy Pouts made a good point. Like, he thinks that Morgan's going to, or that Balin's going to kill Morgan. That might happen. That, that'd be interesting. That'd be kind of cool. If he I, don't know, I, re- I really think it'd be cool to see, like, a, like magic. Oh, yeah. A force Same. Using, like, yeah. I think we're going to see that. That'd be really cool. The, the thing that we have to keep in mind, though, is that this culminates in the movie oh yeah so we have (laughs) all this stuff we have to wait so long we we really have to and it it would be wise to keep that fact in mind because no matter how much closer we got in the trailer could be like at the end of this no joke dude i'm literally bracing myself for the fact that we're gonna get five minutes of him at the end and that's Uh, it well i but i said but jeremiah remember i said that i said that but it's just stupid but they're but they're playing the, they're playing the long game like if I, if I was feloni i wouldn't and uh, i wouldn't that too, i might not reveal him until the very end you know would not surprise me if we get an episode of mando thrown in here no 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 no, no, no. i'm just no, saying they wouldn't do that i'm I, saying that right I do, now i do really hope we get a flashback yeah. i hope we get a flashback with anakin or at least with Vader or something. Well, I think that's already confirmed. Yeah, I I think they confirmed he's in it. I just don't know to what capacity. But I don't know. I I just 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 keep in mind that whatever amount of closure we think we're gonna get, it's probably gonna be less than mm-hmm. that because they're they're playing the long game now. We have officially mm-hmm. started like the the Mando cinematic universe is like now in full swing if it wasn't before it's for sure in full swing now yeah because now we have this end goal of the movie in mind so because there's at least what two more seasons amanda uh probably yeah because they said season three was the middle of a story which could refer to just the mando verse but i'm assuming it's the mandalorian series it's the middle so there's 
Yeah, it would be well, nice to not have to wait very long. But. Potential Bogotan show. I don't know. I think that's... No. Potential... Maybe even a Sabine show at this point? No. 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 Uh, I'm good. I think, I think we're not oh, going to get... Sure. We could probably take... There might be a break. Because we're going to get Acolyte next spring sometime. And so like we might not have any Mandoverse stuff until like another year. Yeah, especially because of the strike. I was going to say probably more than that and, now. And I know we're supposed to get Skeleton Crew this year sometime, they said. Which takes place during the same time, but it's kind of loosely related. But they could probably just put certain events in that show that impact the Mandoverse yeah. stuff. But... but. Yeah, who knows? I just want to see Thrawn's mastermind at work. That's all. Yo, same. That's I, all I my just heart want wants. people. I just want people who have never seen Rebels or read any of the books to like experience Thrawn for the first time. Yeah, me too. Yeah, just him standing there with the with the voice with yep. the cadence. I just. just I'm ready. It. He's my you favorite. What else you ready for? Voicemail, voicemail time. time. Yeah. So it's, well, uh, what did we rank this episode though? Because we didn't do the last episode. But what do we do? What are we ranking this episode? I give this an eight. Jeremy. Yeah, no, that's probably about accurate. Eight. I'm gonna give it a nine. I'm really hoping. I don't know if I've ever given anything a ten before. Well, but I'm hoping that this you show... weren't here for Andor. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> That's true. I I hope that I will be able to give my first ten on this. I, I'm I'm having a lot of expectations for episode five because that's the next Dave Floney uh, mm -hmm. thing, and so yeah, it's going it's going a little fast too. I feel like we're gonna get to we're gonna get through this next episode, which will have the other scenes from the trailer. They'll have the fights, the lightsaber duels. Well, in that case, then maybe it's wrong because. They're going to yeah Cetos. Yeah, we see Balin versus Ahsoka. We see Sabine versus Shin. Yep, on that planet. So, so I think I think this next episode we're gonna get all of that, or it if not, it'll be drawn out over the next two, and then and then we're in new territory at that point. Mm -hmm. But I'd, I'm in, willing. We're to in it. unknown regions. Ah! <laughs> that was good. Uh, that was that was one of your better ones. Uh, <laughs> but I will say I, I, I'm willing to bet that this next episode is going to have the rest of the trailer scenes in it and then we're going to be flying into new stuff I mean if we know anything about Star Wars trailers we get pretty much all of it in the first three three episodes yeah. so. what if like one of the episodes is just that fight? the end of Rebels to the current time do we get like this do we get that scene live action though do we get the yes. scene with it oh to. yes we get that Let's live action on. give me yes please we see give me it that. we see the end of the battle of othal we and see then that. we see it from ezra and thrawn's perspective yes please like, oh, when please. they're in hyperspace please and then it's like an hour-long episode of this them in this new galaxy bro like Okay, uh, what just Sign happened? Sign me up twice on a Sunday night. I don't even know what that means. I'm in. Don't you work Sundays? <laughs> yeah, but I don't work Sunday nights. Oh, okay. So there you go. I do, though. Well, you can't I be there. Work. Anyways, so, I, dude, freak. <sighs> yeah. If they don't, can do that in the Book of Boba up. Fett with Mando, they can don't, do that with don't get my hopes up. Ezra D and does, Thrawn. Does Thrawn have to be in a back to tank? Maybe that's why he's so blue. It's oh my he's god! <laughs> he's like extra blue in a trailer that we see in Rebels. No, but anyway, I, that would be that would be freaking fantastic. Anyway, voicemail time. Oh yeah, yeah. So, let's uh, transition over. It's voicemail time. <sighs> so good. All right, Beautiful. Cool. cool. Well, we have four voicemails tonight. Sick. First one that we, is from someone we haven't heard from in a while. Is it Drew's so mic? A, no. No. Oh. We haven't heard Drew's mic probably in, since before you. So, wow. 
are you Drew's mic? And you just, since you retired from here? Maybe. Well, the thing is, remember, I got a new mic stand, so he doesn't talk that much anymore. And it, what was the keyboard? Drew's keyboard, too? Yeah. Mm-hmm. But no, it's not either of those. It's oh. our one of our favorite Canadians. Oh. Brady. Hey. Oh, so let's, Zonotopius Hypnar the third in the yes. Discord. So let's take the OG. A listen. Hey there, Empire Radio. It is Brady here. I just wanted to say I've been catching up on your stuff lately, and I am really enjoying listening to all of the Hot Takes episodes, and your analysis of the Thrawn trilogy is absolutely fantastic. Hey. I'm really enjoying listening to that. However, on the note of the Thrawn trilogies, I must say that I disagree with, well, to an extent, with the take that Thrawn is better in the new canon. I really liked the original Thrawn, and while he has more characterization in the new canon, I don't think it serves his EU character incredibly well, especially the fact that he is completely ignorant to politics. While it makes him more of a believable guy, more of a relatable guy, because he has a weakness, I just, <clears throat> I personally disagree. So while it may be objectively better, I loved Thrawn in the EU, and I wish that they had kind of carbon copied him, personally. But anyways, have a great day. See you later. Yeah. All right. Cool, cool. Yeah. All right. Next up, if you watch the VCU, oh, well. yeah, look you're how familiar you're just with not this character. Give me a chance to say anything. Well, I gave a pause, and you said nothing. And well, so I was I thinking. It's fine. I, I yeah, get it. You, you want to say uh, something? I was going to say, I... I'm reading Outbound Flight. I think it's like the second or the third time that I've mentioned that in this episode, but I'm reading Outbound Flight. And th for some reason, Thrawn in that book f feels very fragile. Like he doesn't seem as unstoppable in that. Like mm. in the canon novels, they really play into his strengths well, into his art, into his tactical ability. And in this... Maybe it's because he's not like a main main character, but I f I feel like I don't know. Maybe maybe it's maybe it's more human in general. They, maybe they humanize him more in the EU. I don't know. It's I'm I'm still experiencing it, so maybe I'll I'll once I finish the book, I'll come back and I'll give my thoughts. But I, to be fair, I love both Rons. Brady, very valid point. Thank you for sharing. I respect it. All right, cool, cool. Well, if you have watched the VCU film, fan film, yep. you're familiar with one of these main characters that we grow to love in the VCU. So let's take a listen to our good friend, Sheev Palpatine. <laughs> Hello, Empire Radio. It's your boy, Sheev, <laughs> calling in. And I just wanted to say that I am very sorry I haven't been able to communicate with you frequently in the last few months. I have been very busy running the galaxy and trying to conquer new worlds while also building up my dark side arsenal and being on Exegol monitoring, you know, all of the Sith cult stuff. It has been a very busy time for me. However, in my downtime, I have been catching up on your podcast, and I must say that it is fantastic as usual. And I am very glad that you are the official podcast of the Empire. Mm -mm -mm -mm. May the dark side be with you. All right, cool, cool. Thank you, Sheev. It's hey. always good to, to hear from you. Love hearing we from Sheev. We really love your story arc in the voicemail cinematic universe. You're definitely a fan favorite from that uh, story. So You're the official emperor of the Empire Radio podcast. I thought I was, but okay. Um, uh, moving you on. can take that up with <laughs> Sheev, my man. I'm not getting in the way of that. <laughs> All right, cool, cool. Uh, and the next two are from one individual who last time we had voicemail so two weeks ago um was his first time sending in so today we have two from dylan so let's take a listen to first one hello this is dylan and i'm back for another your voicemail in this voicemail i'm going over some theories i have about upcoming star wars products Starting with the Filoni movie, I think it will be an adaptation 
version of the original Theron trilogy from the EU. And I don't think we're going to see Plagueis and Pelps in the first season of Acolyte, but I can see them coming later. And, and in the Ray movie, I hope to... I hope we see Ray interact with different Force users to compare to compare to like the Jedi Order, and that's it for now. Bye. All right, cool. Thank you, Dylan. Yeah, thank so you. So he had his own theories that the uh, Dave Filoni film is going to be an adaptation of Heir to the Empire. It does. It does really feel that way. I agree. Can I, I agree? But. How much of that story could be fleshed out, like with well, what we have as canon? Like, what is it? I mean, they they can't have the the main characters of Luke Han and Leia. Really, that would that wouldn't be great. I I don't think that would be great. But I think the idea of Thrawn coming back as a threat to rebuild the Empire, it, like that that's literally the that's the trilogy. Like that's Thrawn's part of the right. trilogy, right? So I think. Him, seeing him come back, pulling all the Imperial resources together, maybe making a strike or two against the New Republic, I think that would be very, very doable. Um, Why couldn't they have Luke, Han, and Leia? I don't want them. Dude, I'm, yeah. I'm so done. Just don't get... Because they have to de-age him. And, oh, yeah. and, like, I don't... Just, like, leave, leave Carrie Fisher. Just, like, let it go. Like, at this point... I mean, like I, I can get behind that. But she's got a great legacy. I also legacy. like the concept of potential th- Dave getting three movies and who's, who's replacing. Who's saying that? Yeah, saying that. He thinks he thinks everything's going to be a trilogy. No, like, it's not. It's not going to be. A, there's no way. Okay. Anyways, I like that concept of potential three movies, and we can replace seven, eight, nine with those. There's no way they're going to wreck. They're not going to cannibalize. It's not right, Conning. It would take place before, so you can just say you pretend just, that it's kind of like this new galaxy. It's so far out there, you can't get to it. He's kind of thinking, "Oh, the the sequel trilogy is so far out there, we don't care about it anymore. We got this trilogy well, instead." All I'm saying is the Isilamari could be a thing because yeah. if he's if if it's him versus Ahsoka, then and if Balin and Shin and them all end up joining forces at some point, he's going to need something to combat Force users. So it's very foreseeable, like it's it, it's very possible that the Asilomari could come from outside of the galaxy. Mm. So it, there are there are many different elements of the Thrawn trilogy that could be adapted pretty easily. It's just that mm-hmm. they we couldn't have Luke as the main character. No, I'm not saying for them to be the main character, but side characters. I mean, yeah, I don't, yeah. they just they really need to just let it go, like. I, I I really liked I really liked Luke in Mando. That was great. But like the second we start giving them more screen time, because they're gonna have to DH Harrison Ford, they're gonna have to do Carrie Fisher, and and that's going to be a whole process. Like I just feel like they should stay away from it. Yeah. Uh, also, Dylan said we're not gonna see Plagueis or Sheev in first season of Acolyte. Yeah. I think yeah. if if we do, it might be just at the end, like the last episode. Is like, she oh, how old? He, there's no way he would be there, though. It would be Plagueis. Okay, but it takes place. It starts a hundred years before episode. Yeah. Right. So if you know the show takes place where it goes over a span of time, where oh, uh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, I, I, yeah, he's yeah, born yeah. in because he's. What fifty something in episode one? I, okay, I I see that. I thought I thought like he'd be a baby or something. I like, thought they were saying like he's gonna be in the show as like a teenager or something. Like there's no at a hundred years out. I'm like, dude, Dark Side ain't that good. <laughs> Not yet. Um, but I think Plagueis they could for sure if he's he's probably alive a hundred years before episode one. Like. Oh, we don't Pla- know. Pla- Plagueis, yeah. It, it, it's totally foreseeable for him because his species can live very long time, very mm-hmm. long amounts of time. And I and I know, like, the Plagueis book, he kills Plagueis during the events of episode one. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. they could do it different where he does it decades earlier or something like that. I don't know. Um, And then Dan also said he hopes to see Ray interact with other groups of force users which i think is 
would be cool to do because it's kind of weird that only the Jedi are the only like group of like force people. Like you have Jar Jar Binks is like girlfriends species that does their own thing. Oh, but like, it'd be cool to see different factions rise up that are force users. Yeah. There were, there were quite a number of them actually. They're more than people think. So during our empire con live recording, Drew and I figured out who the villain is going to be in the Ray movie. It's going to be Grogu. <laughs> and we had some good thoughts. Like they could do that. Cause we're like the Ray movie has to have a villain, but who's going to be a villain that's going to be. Does it though? Does it really? I mean, yeah. What are they going to so, do? So she's this... just there like having like. It's like an adventure crackers film. with the kids. Like uh, that's stupid. Like that's she's exploring the fort. I don't know. Something so bad either, has to happen. It's going to be either Grogu or Broom Kid. Or Broom Kid. <laughs> Drew's favorite person. Oh, either way, we're getting Broom Kid in the show. Yeah, for sure. Way. Broom Kid's going to be recruited. Like, that's just the thing. In this movie. Oh, okay. Like, Broom, Broom Kid's going to be there. He's going to force sweep all day long. It's, dude. it's <laughs> so annoying. But yeah, he'll be uh, But yes, thank you, Dylan, for that. And he has one more voice. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Let's listen. So let's take a listen. Hey there, Empire Radio, Dylan here, and I've been preparing for the Ahsoka show by watching all of Rebels, and I have to say, it was a blast, and with that, I have seen all of Clone Wars and Resistance, and have, and I have to say, we need live action Hondo, and that's Facts. it, bye. Facts. Yes, yeah. I agree. I loved going to Galaxy's Edge and doing the Millennium Falcon ride mm -hmm. and seeing him as the host. I'm like, oh, real yeah. Hondo. It's possible. Because that takes place, Galaxy Edge takes place after the sequel trilogy. Or Bro, Jerry? Galaxy Edge is, is all okay, right. okay, I'm just asking a question. You know Jeremiah likes his dates. It, but it takes place <laughs> during during or after the sequel trilogy, right? It's Yeah, it's, it's post-Return of the Jedi. Yeah. But somehow but, Mando's but, but there and Ahsoka's there now. And... Yeah. But I'm saying the canon story of... Yeah, it takes place. Yeah, it's, it's, but it's during the sequel trilogy, right? I don't no, know. I think the canon story is after episode 9. What? No, because they have... Because Rey's... Oh, so, yeah, you're right, you're right, you're right. Yep. It's like during the First Order because Rey is there and Kylo is looking for Rey. So my point is... If that story is canon and it takes place decades after the Mandoverse, then Hondo's alive. Then Hondo's alive still. So I think yeah, he could show up. But my point is, I don't think any of that matters because they keep adding these characters from the Mandoverse. They're also adding thinner lightsabers, I guess. Yes. Should have been Save. the case all along, but <laughs> whatever. Yeah, that's why a lot of their lightsabers are on sale right now. Yeah. I really want to get Dooku's Jedi lightsaber. I love that thing, but it's pretty cool. They have a box set that's all of Obi Wan's lightsabers. Mm. It's like which is how many? Is that three? Three. Yeah, it's the um, the Phantom Menace one, the Attack of the Clones, and Revenge of the Sith one, and then the weathered one from Tatooine. I think. I think that's it's those three. Mm -hmm. Because like you're Fun. getting two, and the only difference is the the freaking paint job, essentially. <laughs> but it's like a seven thousand. Well, that's the only difference between Anakin's and Ray's. Yeah, that freaking it's leather band strap. In the yeah, middle. yeah. Stephanie's brother has both of them. I'm like, they're the <laughs> same thing. I I'm really excited for Kanan's to drop. Is, has it dropped yet? I know that the fans voted on it. Kanan. Kanan's hilt is coming. I think it did. Drop right. I know. Really, Yoda's is dropping. Yeah, Yoda's is so tiny. It, yeah, for, you can get it for miles. <laughs> sure, I could. Um, uh, but anyway, while you're looking that up, we might as well just go over some socials and get out of here because we're is there. One more? No, no, oh, that is the last one. Oh. So, mm -hmm. if you're yeah. interested in connecting with Empire Radio. Go in the description, click the links, that's the official Empire Radio. Links are spelled with two eyes. Click that. It's everything for Empire Radio. We got Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. We go live on Twitch for every episode. Go so if you want to catch us live and join us in the chat and fact check us and all that stuff. Follow us on Twitch. 
Um, we have our fan email. We have uh, a, a link to join a Discord. Go join a Discord. A lot of fun. Uh, we have what else do we got? Needlessynerdy.com. We're part of that entertainment network. So if you like nerdy content apart from Star Wars, go check out that link. And Jeremiah's also, only fans. No. Nope. And we have a voicemail too. So if you want to <laughs> send us a voicemail, go yeah. click on that. And you should send us a voicemail because it's a lot of fun. Yep. We like to hear new people because, of course, we love all our regulars. But yeah. Jeremiah said people's... we are tired of hearing from the same people. But it's fun hearing new people. Just kidding. Especially those with accents. We really like the accents here at Empire mm-hmm. Radio. So, yeah, if you've got yeah, a go sick southern drawl, a th- sick, a thick southern drawl, <laughs> bring that thing on the podcast. Facts. Please. Also, Oh, you said the voicemail's not working for you. Um, email us at the fan email. TK, are you the one that sent us a message on Instagram about that? Uh, if that is, I don't know, it seems to be working. I had people check. Uh, I don't know what the issue is. He said yes. Um, sometimes it's the device. Sometimes you have to like reload the app or something. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Try, check that out. It. But... It has been updated too, so maybe that's. Yeah, so sometimes it's like re-uploading the app or trying a different device or something sometimes helps, but it's not our not our company, so we can't really do anything on our end to help. So, yeah, <laughs> sorry about that. But you can always send us an email if you just want to send us a question in email, or you can send an audio file on to the email as long yes. as it's no longer than a minute. We'll still <laughs> play it too. Yep. So, but also we are knocking on five hundred door. On YouTube, so if you guys are listening, and you guys have not subscribed over to our YouTube channel. There's a lot of other content over there, so you guys want to make sure you guys go do that. Yeah, like yeah. Jeremiah's reaction videos, like yeah, it's my watch parties. A headache. <laughs> There's a lot of over there, so you guys do not want to miss that stuff. So make sure you guys go subscribe over to us on YouTube. All right, let's get to 500 before it still get ends. That'd be really cool. That'd be far away. All right, y'all. 420. 420. <laughs> it's not it's not super far. It's not uh-huh. super far, but it's also sometimes it takes a long time to go up 80. So yeah. But if you're listening, just go do it. Just go do it. And you know what? Maybe we'll do a giveaway or something. I don't know. Um uh, that's coming out of your pocket because I don't got any money. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll uh, figure it out, but we'll do a giveaway. I'm saying it right now. We'll okay. Do, do you so, want that Ahsoka helmet in the back? No, that's not what I'm saying. <laughs> Chill um, out. <laughs> But anything else, boys? Nah. Oh, I'm excited for episode three. Yep. Yep. Well, you've all been listening to another Ahsoka-tastic episode of Empire Radio. I'm Jeremiah. I'm still not a Jedi. And I'm Drew. And may the Force be with you. Always. Always. Always.